Can you hear us? That's the main thing we need to know. Can you hear them? Hello. 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 Can you hear me? <laughs> it's me What's that? Oh, hello. Is it? No, no, no. Oh, I'll see. How does the Adele one go? I know, but I oh. was just thinking of a song that I learned at junior school. Oh, okay. How does it go? <laughs> do, you want, do you want to enlighten us? Yeah. Okay. Well, all right, Liana then. can hear us. Awesome. Okay, let's go. Cool. But oh, Byron says we've got all three. We've got all three. Yeah, let's I'm do it. Okay. Gonna, all, right. Gonna, all right. Yeah, right. We're on. good. We're good. We're good. Okay. So let's just start again. We're going to start from scratch. So, hi, everyone. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> nice. Right. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. So basically, we're, well, I'm, I'm here on my channel with Banana Warrior Princess and Rebecca Palsy, and I'm guesting on Emma's channel, and Reb's guesting on Emma's channel, and no one's on Reb's, unfortunately. No one's on my channel. That was we're both online. Complicated. Yes. But I've left the uh, links in the descriptions for both of your channels, so for Chris and for Reb. So definitely go and check out their channels. Yeah. Reb is thing is do. like killing it with the street activism at the moment. She's got a really small channel, but like you upload street interviews just as regularly as I do, and they're fucking awesome. So Thank please, you. please go and check her, out her her um, street interview videos. But she's also got some really other some good mm. other content as well. Thank um, you. Yeah. And if and activism so because we yeah. want to try all methods and please subscribe to chris hines as well because he's a just a freaking amazing he's the best one vegan activist he works oh. so hard like every spare minute chris that you have you it's just spending on well you're going to go into it in a minute like this yeah. documentary that you're going to be no, working we'll, that you we'll, are we'll, working yeah on. we'll talk about that one in a um, bit anyway we want to get on to the, the discussion of yes effective, effective vegan, vegan activism. activism yes what works what doesn't work yeah because i mean that, that i think chris um, <laughs> well what i was going to say is that i think the the biggest thing holding the vegan movement back at the moment i would say is vegans um uh i think um oh, yeah every, everyone's everyone's super passionate and stuff but i think that um sometimes we don't quite know what to do about the situation and i find that some of the tactics mm. used can be a bit problematic and maybe are kind of pushing people away rather than bringing them into the lifestyle. So I just thought it'd be a good idea to kind of chat about it and kind of you know, have a discussion as a, a group and see what people find effective, people find not effective, and, you know, maybe we can improve all of our activism, which would be great, which is mm. what we want, because the more effective we are, the better we are for the animals. And in the end, that's what it's about. It's about them. It's not about us. It's not about... Score, you know, us scoring points is about doing what works for the animals and that is that is it yeah. we should do what's best for them no matter what um so and we'll, we'll, pull in, we'll pull in some comments from the chat as well to see what other people uh think as well is uh obviously everyone's views yes. are important so to this, yeah people in the chat um would you say that you stick to one kind of activism or like are there different kinds of outreach and activism that you're too worried to try or that you've had a bad experience mm. with? Because uh, uh, obviously it's like there's a, there's levels of activism, isn't there? Yeah. That you can get involved with something really easy to something elaborate and crazy and... Um, yeah. It, which it, isn't necessarily effective, but it's just another way. And also I want to discuss um, that word activism. Mm -hmm. It's a buzzword and it's a bit of a it's got lots of connotations attached to it that I'm not that most people probably won't feel comfortable with because when you think of activists you think you think of somebody protesting don't you yeah. that's what you think of when you when you with, with the word activism so I just want to sort of break down what activism actually is and yeah. how like you shouldn't have you shouldn't um attach a stigma to it well do you want to start with that uh, if, if we're talking yeah. about activism why don't we just start with the basics of yeah. the the term activism well, yeah, that, that kind of, because yeah, when, like... we had our, when we had our uh, debate with Davey, Chris, yeah, that was one of the things that came up, wasn't it? Like effective forms of activism and stuff. Mm. Um, because Davey used to be a big vegan activist, didn't he? Um, I, don't know, um, I don't know how much of an activist he was. Um, I, I don't know. I kind of get the feeling he kind of went along with other people, but I don't, I don't know. Yeah. They, it didn't feel like he was a true activist. Uh, I don't, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but. But he kind of identified with that kind of movement, though, didn't he, at the time? Yeah. He's not vegan anymore, but um, he did at the time. And he he was saying, like, he thought it was very sort of... Uh, almost sort of, like, culty in a way. Mm. The, the, the whole sort of vegan 
activist and I, I i don't know if that was kind of because it was back in the day and it was attached to like uh, people that broke into labs and that kind of thing like the mm -hmm. direct action and that kind of thing but i think we're sort of moving away from i mean that in of, of itself that kind of activism there's a place for that but yeah. what we're talking about in um we're talking about activism in a in a broader yeah. sense, just sort of like it's more outreach, really. Every, yeah, it? outreach, everyday yeah. stuff you can do, everyday promotion of veganism. Yeah, yeah. rather than the hands-on, you know, saving yeah baby chicks. Well, it's from different, isn't it? Yeah, there, there's there's yeah. vegan outreach and then there's direct action. They're two very different things. Yeah, they're two different types of activism. Yeah, but, you know, the general ones. So I think it's yes. Yeah, so between the two so we're talking about the the outreach kind of yeah because yeah. d direct direct action yeah. is more of a um saving the animals directly you know and making a yeah. change directly to the animal where vegan outreach is more based on changing public perception and you know changing mm. people's minds well, and getting so, them yeah. to yeah to move over to to that the lifestyle where these animals won't need saving so i think that's the the main difference between the two um just to read a couple of things, so a couple of people have written about different types of activism and what they feel works. I thought it might be worth going over there, so, uh, those. So um, we've got someone saying someone promotes just the, the, the health benefits. Um, someone uh, believes activism through food has worked for them, which is really good. Yeah, people always love uh, yeah. food. Someone saying the only experience I have with vegan activism was a guy in front of my high school handing out flyers with disturbing imagery. It didn't convince many people and it came off as pushy. Mm -hmm so okay yeah so i mean yeah i just want to distinguish between the the direct action kind of activism which we aren't really a part of then you have like the direct uh, the um the vegan activism where you're sort of yeah you're proactively going out there and talking to people distributing leaflets the outreach and stuff like that and then there's the online kind of activism which is the youtube the twitter all those kind of things so i think there's three categories there yeah so we should probably just we should probably discuss each one individually because I think each one has specific yeah, kind of yeah. things to yeah. do and not. I think I think to be honest, I think the best one to start with, which I think is probably the most problematic of all of them, is online activism, yeah. which I feel is extreme uh, is a, a huge huge problem at the moment. Um, mm. Like as a person, yes. you know, I, I'm in like about what. 30 to 40 different vegan groups and so I'm constant yes. and, and I add everybody like anyone who sends me a friend request I accept and you know I have got so many vegans on my Facebook friends and the amount of kind of you know what I would class as bad online activism is is huge um there I think that the main thing people are doing is they use they're using it as a platform to just shout they're just shouting shouting at yeah. people letting out their inner frustrations um all that kind of stuff which i i understand i mean you know when you go vegan and you understand what's going on with the animals yeah it is very frustrating yes it makes you angry yes we have a, a right to be angry of what everything's happening but as far as being effective and turning people vegan i don't think it's working on you know, online doing these ranty statuses that all meat eaters are murderers um and stuff like that because all i find is people will either hide your statuses they'll delete you block you and you've done nothing you haven't changed anyone's minds um and this i mean to be fair I mean, there is there is a few people that would um oh you're echoing chris can you turn... what's that you're echoing can you turn your volume off your YouTube or wherever it's, wherever it's coming from. Um, hold on. How's oh, that? Is that a bit? Is, is that a bit better? Uh, I think so. It was when we were talking. Yeah. Um, it stopped now. What was I saying? <laughs> I completely forgotten it. <laughs> what was I just saying then? I have no well, idea. Chris was saying like people are shit mm. and just saying meat is murder and stuff. Oh yes. I mean, uh, <clears throat> there is going to be a, always going to be a tiny little fraction of people that you'll uh, win over with, you know, the, the, those kind of statuses. If you just show them like people some people do respond well to graphic footage and like the shock factor of it it's a small percentage though mm. yeah i mean but, i mean there's you know, i think there's there's better ways better. to do it there i mean in, in the end we, we don't want to concentrate on a small minority that might go vegan because of being shouted at when we know that the larger group of people are going to go to you know and look into veganism with another approach 
we should always do the approach that goes for the mi- the majority, not the mi- the minority. Like yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure there is there are people that need to just be shouted at and to be called a murderer or something, and they go, oh yeah, I'll, I'll be vegan. But yeah. I don't think that's the majority of people. I think um, you know concentrating on the on that kind of you know basis is a bit kind of counterproductive. You, I don't think you're going to get much. Well, results. I, well, it's, I think it all depends on your. A personality because if you look at people like um oh fuck is israel guy uh Ohad? you know really famous vegan um Ohad. no the other bloke that's basically was making uh israel go vegan now what well, gary gary no he's going to the lectures the... gary Yorofsky. he's yeah gary Yorofsky. shocks people into it um, so you know, I think there, yeah, there but, is there is something to be said for that kind of style of activism. Yeah, but but, but wouldn't it's but, it? but wouldn't you agree that Gary Yorofsky was most effective when he was more education based? Yes, he used strong language and he was firm with yeah. things. But in his later years, mm. when he started getting a lot more ranty, because obviously he was burnt out. I totally understand why he was like he is. Yeah. Um, but then he wasn't so effective. Then he was pushing people away and that's why he's come off yeah, you know, come off social media yeah um, and staying on all those tv shows and stuff yeah his, his education base yeah uh, you know, it's, activism it's, was where he was effective yeah and, and then he wasn't calling you know you watch his speeches he's not calling people murderers in those speeches he's not he's just explaining things in mm. just a very direct yeah. form um yeah, yeah. And, and that's effective and it's, and what he was like later and doing it very truthfully and honestly doing it very truthfully and honestly um like no holes barred as well like he 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 doesn't he wouldn't refrain from using certain types of language because it might be triggering for some some people he would just basically just explains things um in in as realistically as possible yeah mm. like w- without um excluding certain words or something that people might be offended by yeah so i think Do you know what i mean yeah yeah but so then I, some people argue that you can't use those certain buzzwords you know like holocaust and stuff like that because it's triggering, but yeah, discuss. <laughs> well, um, well, yeah. well, I mean, that, I mean that, that's, some, that, that's something I was going to discuss anyway about the, the kind of triggering word thing, because I've, I've got kind of mixed views on this. I think in certain situations, you can use those words effectively. Mm-hmm. Like you can use words like, you know, Holocaust or rape or referring to mm-hmm. slavery or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, anything that's kind of triggering. But I also think, especially online, that those terms generally don't work. They generally um, put up a barrier. And what we've got to realize- Online? Yeah, for okay. online, yeah. Rather than in, in person? In person, you can kind of judge a person and see whether they'd be receptive to that. And you kind of get a chance to kind of explain it more, but, you're not, but online, you kind of, you don't. If you, if you phrase it wrong or people read it wrong, then instantly people put a barrier up and they're not interested mm-hmm. and suddenly you've offended them and they don't care what you've got to say anymore. Mm-hmm. And I've seen it happen multiple times, even, even like when I've used those terms myself. Um, so I think, yeah, especially online, it, like basically we, we've got enough barriers to deal with as it is. Like we don't need to be putting up additional barriers. If we can say something in another way, which isn't going to trigger someone and still get the point across, I think we should probably do that because Again, it's about it's about being effective. It's not necessarily about being a hundred percent right. It's about doing whatever is going to help the animals. And if we know that we can explain something yeah. in a different way and avoid that barrier going up, then I think that is actually more effective to do than just to use the word just for the sake of it. Because um, I've just seen it so many times. Like people will write, you know, like oh, you know, they'll do like a, a Holocaust comparison or something. People just don't get it. They just don't get it. And you don't get that chance like you would in a one-on-one situation to really explain it. Um, oh, you know, yeah, that's, yeah, I agree. Yeah, and uh, so, you know, do, there's a lot of meaning. Do you think that's something that, what you do, you think that's something that um, uh, do you think that's something that Isaac needs to work on? Because he doesn't care. He's just like, I, I'm not here to be liked. Hmm. I'm just going to tell it how it is. And that's, how, and I think there is a place for that, and he's turned he's turned quite a few people vegan with his videos. Yeah, yeah and I, he I hasn't. Mean, I mean, the, hold, the other thing hold, that... hold back from using those terms like Holocaust, retard, and can stuff I just like say that. I think it's really important that we, when we are using those kind of words, 
be it on the street or online, we have to know the actual definitions of them. Yeah, yeah. That, and so that's what how we can um, be confident in what we're saying. Definitely, so if a yeah. carnist says you can't use the word Holocaust, you can be, well, actually, the definition of Holocaust is a mass killing. Mass it doesn't killing. necessarily refer to human beings. Yeah. Um, so it's just something to have in your knowledge bank. Same with murder. Yeah. Same with slaughter. Um, yeah. All those kind of Humane words. Humane slaughter, now that it's an oxymoron. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Like Just basic language. Yeah. Oh. yeah, I know it can... You don't want to like get it into, turn it into a semantics game. Yeah, exactly. You know, but just know what you're it's, saying. It's useful to know exactly what you're talking about, definitely. And yeah. you know, like Chris mentioned, it's whatever's effective. So, if, for example, you do say the word Holocaust to someone you're street, speaking to on the street, and they say, "Well, hang on, I'm of Jewish descent. Can you yeah, not yeah. use that word? Bloody respect it. Don't yeah. use that word with that particular person because they're not going to listen to you." Yeah, what, what, um, what we're talking about, um, the, um, yeah, I'm talking about Isaac and his methods. The thing is with Isaac is he's already yeah. admitted that he's not trying to be a vegan activist. He's just trying to speak truthfully. Yeah. So it's a bit different with him. Yeah. He's not actively, you know, he doesn't claim to be a vegan activist. Um, I mean, and I'm pretty sure in a one-to-one -one situation, he probably will speak very differently to what he does on the videos. I can, I, I can imagine him being uh, quite respectful yeah. and everything because you can kind of get that when he's kind of in a debate with someone. He, yeah, he can be quite chill where he wants to be. Um, so I, th I, th I think that even he would have slightly different yeah. methods than what he does online. <laughs> someone just said something I just want to reply to. They just said, um, yeah. when I said about it's not about being 100% right, he said, are you, yeah. are you saying it's okay to be misleading with information? And I'd say, no, it, I'm not... It's not about being misleading. Right, what are you talking about? Oh, someone on my chat about? has written about, in reply to me saying, it's not about being 100% um, right, it's about being effective. So he's saying, it, it, uh, am I... Oh, I think like... Uh, yeah, so he's saying... Uh, uh, yeah, so he's basically saying, is it okay um, to be misleading? You know, is that what I'm saying? It's okay to be misleading. And I'm not saying that at all. Oh, all. All I'm saying is there are multiple ways you can explain something without having yeah, you to can use say, certain words. It's not misleading. Murder, it's just, it's more um, saying, not triggering, basically. Mm -hmm. Not not putting up a, trying to avoid putting up a barrier by just explaining something in a different way. The, the meaning will still be the same. You're just using a different word. There's multiple ways to explain things. That's what, that's what I was saying. So, yeah, so for, an example of that, for an example of that, um, if somebody doesn't like the word murder, you could say, okay, death stabbing of animals then. Sounds worse than murder, doesn't it? Yeah, or, <laughs> yeah, or... or or just killing. I mean, it's true. It, yeah. In, in, instead of saying, you know, for example, oh, Holocaust, oh. you can just, you know, explain that ninety, you know, sorry, sixty billion animals are being needlessly slaughtered. You see what I mean? Like, there's other ways you can yeah, kind of yeah, say. Yeah, whereas was on the, in the Jewish Holocaust. Not saying that the Jewish Holocaust was fucking, you know, atrocious, but more animals are killed every single year than. The whole of i think it's something like every three days more animals are slaughtered and human beings have died in all wars oh, throughout yeah. history yeah and that's you, shocking and it's also the more animals more animals die per year than the amount of humans to have ever existed on the planet since the dawn of time well yeah, yeah. so you can explain things that, in that, that way that, that's <laughs> perspective doesn't it yeah you know, so if you're going to say if you're going to use the holocaust then as long as you have those sort of I think it comes across as more credible to use that word if you have those stats to back yeah, it up. Yeah, I agree. Like, it's like, well, okay, I've, you know. Yeah. How many, how many animals died mm. per year and how many people died in that Holocaust? Why can't I use this word? Like, yeah. Th surely th this animal Holocaust, I know. And then pe people go into, you know, oh, yeah, but you can't compare humans to animals. It's not the same. Yeah, name the name trait. Name the trait. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, we'll, we'll get on to name the trait in a, in a moment anyway. But um, yeah, I think so. I think just as you know, a, a personal thing, I think for people doing activism online, I would say to try, try and avoid those triggering, ter triggering terms and use other language to explain it, which can be just as powerful because I think you'll just get a better reaction. Homicide. What's that? Homicide of animals. The homicide of animals. <laughs> homicide. I mean, you can say really slaughter homicide. or stuff like that. And it's also the way you f phrase it as well. Like, Putting statuses out saying like, yeah. you know, oh, you're all carnist wankers and, you know, you're all dickheads and stuff. Like, 
th- that that's not going to do anything. It's, <laughs> it's just going to make people block you. And well, actually, one one thing I do want to say is that there seems to be a growing number of people that um, seem to want to delete every single meat eater off their Facebook. Like, and they end up just Doing being... What? So you can't, Chris, you can't hear can't... What's that? Chris? Yeah, can you hear me? Sorry, you keep cutting out. Yeah, what were you saying? Okay, yeah, what I was saying it's, is... It's the same number of people on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, Chris, being... yeah, I was saying... Chris? Yeah. Oh, you're echoing them for some reason. I don't know what's going on. Um, yeah, what I was saying is there's a growing number of people online, like uh, vegans, that seem to, for some reason, um, seem to want to delete anyone that eats meat or anything off their Facebook friends and kind of is this like, yeah. oh, you know, if you yeah. if you eat meat, then delete me and all this kind of stuff. It seems to be a bit of a, oh, yeah. a growing trend. I, and I, I would say mm. that is not effective activism. You want these people on your Facebook. You want them on your Facebook. And because if you haven't got them on your Facebook, no one's going to read your statuses. You're putting up statuses to vegans and you're just living in an echo yeah. chamber of just other vegans going, yeah. And, and, and you're just being a victim as well. You're just like, oh, God, where is me? I've got all these carnists on my Facebook and mm. I can't be dealing with it. You know, like they're such bad people. But the thing is, what people need to understand is that until the person actually fully understands and is aware of what they're contributing to you can't blame them until because they just don't know right and until they've actually acknowledged like what happens to male chicks in the egg industry what happens to male cars in the dairy industry and the fact that you know like animals are being slaughtered needlessly for the sake of you know a hamburger mm-hmm. until they like, like are conscious of that and that sort of processes and i don't know whatever it takes like they might need to see some footage or they might need to explain to them in no uncertain terms Mm -hmm. if they are fully aware at that point and then they won't go vegan then at that point you can't really respect respect them yeah does that make sense yeah one thing that i always try and make clear is that we should as a community stop thinking that meat eaters are evil people because they're not we all no. we all ate meat a well, majority of us anyway at one point in our life we were not evil people we were just uninformed indoctrinated people that had been yeah. born into a habit that we'd never ever questioned people generally are nice people they're not horrible people and you've got to remember that when you do confront someone they will you know that people will gen, you know, generally be defensive. And just think about that in a psychological way. Just expect people to be defensive. Don't get angry at them for being defensive. It's, it's normal. You're literally telling them that they've been living a lie. That's a big thing to take on, you know, to say that everything really you've done is. since the day you were born is wrong and you kill animals. That's a big thing for people to process. You know, and, and well, they're killing by proxy, technically, but yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like, I'm sure, like a lot of vegans have probably experienced this myself. I mean, I know I did. But when I, if we have any non-vegans, yeah. I mean, when I when I first went vegan, it was really overwhelming, and I remember at one point, you know, I, I was I was at that angry vegan kind of stage and ranting online, and I remember once it broke me, and I, I proper like broke into tears because I was so overwhelmed that no one understood mm-hmm. like. What was going on and it was like it was terrible and yeah. you know it, and you've got to remember how big a thing it is um and these you know trying to get people to accept that they're, they're doing something that's bad is difficult and we've got to understand that it's a very psychological game it's a very tactical game it's not about just shouting at everyone that they're evil because that don't work. Finish, yeah. yeah we just got to be very sure. tactical we, and we've got to appreciate that Everyone's going to be different. Everyone's going to have their own psychological barriers. And we've just got to try and basically try and just keep our cool and just remember that everyone's bacon, though, or all this kind of stuff is purely defense mechanisms because they need to justify yes. it. They need to make themselves think that they're not doing something bad, which is fine, which is completely understandable because no one wants to, no one wants to think they've done something bad. I think as, as long as we appreciate that and we understand that, that's the basis of then being able to be more effective with people. But shouting at people, calling them murderers, deleting all meteors off your Facebook and all that kind of stuff, and generally just shouting at people, I, it, it's not effective. I, I think it just turns people off. People just think, vegans are nuts, vegans are crazy, I'm going to block them, I'm going to hide them from my timeline, I'm not interested in hearing what they've got to say. 
and we've got a college. Yeah, now. vegans are jerks. Therefore, I'm not going to go vegan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we that, don't need that. That was actual Justice Warriors' excuse, wasn't yeah. it? On, tw- on Twitter now, he's like, uh, somebody, uh, some vegan. I don't know who it was. It might have been someone in the chat actually. I just said, "Oh, you're a stupid idiot." Actual Justice Warrior or something. It was, I don't know what it was. It was just some, some ad hom. Yeah. And so, Actual oh. Justice Warrior. Oh, I wonder if I can get the tweet up. Actually, he said, "Like, okay, I'm going to contemplate." The inconsistencies for a bit longer then because of this comment kind of thing yeah yeah I just you know, to, to, um... so it's just like that was sort of like against although what is he going to do now is he going to like take the rest of his life to try and search for that inconsistency and not go vegan he's oh. just being lazy I don't know, God, no. yeah not not your milk podcast just add it yeah good quote he said i think something happens the more time you're vegan the more you learn to turn that anger into passion and education which i think is right i think everyone does have that initial angry stage like i really want to you know to shout at everyone and tell them to yes. stop but then i think after a while yeah you do so you do suddenly realize that doesn't work but then it, um but i think it's unfortunate that i think some people because they're they maybe i don't know maybe they're not around other vegan activists that uh, have kind of got to that stage there does seem to be some people that tend to kind of stay in that stage and they just want to continue to shout yeah become re- it's because realistically they don't have anyone to kind of learn from they don't see the um you know i mean I, i'm a complete geek with this stuff i'm permanently looking at videos on effective activism and that kind of stuff you know a lot of people aren't they just they're their own kind of soul vegan in a little town or something and all they know is to be annoyed about it and they haven't got yeah. the knowledge to you know to kind of think oh right maybe so i I want to comment a little bit on the um, how to get around that, how to, because t- when we first go vegan, it's quite difficult to talk about it to people without getting, being reactionary and, and, and emotional and stuff like that, which is what you mentioned, like we, we, we get angry and stuff and how to turn that anger into passion or passion into um, effective communication with people. And I think the single most thing, the single most important thing that's helped me um, in being able to communicate these ideas to people is actually looking into um, epistemology and the Socratic method. Yes. Um, you could just wiki it or whatever. Just and there's loads of videos on like, like um, people like Anthony Magna Bosco on YouTube is like a street epistemologist and just the way he talks to people in just such a friendly manner like he just uses que- he just questions he just asks them questions yeah. in the socratic method like <laughs> yeah so i mean do, do, um, do you want to explain really in, like, in, in kind of layman's like, terms not, the socratic method for people in the chat that might not know what that is yeah so yeah. it's basically it's basically um rather than just bombarding people with information and facts and figures and stuff like that people are much more receptive when they're being asked questions so you can you can ask them leading questions you know um, to get to so that they can get to their own conclusion that's the important thing they you want to lead them to their own conclusion rather than you forcing them to get there mm-hmm. so you can get them to get to that conclusion by asking them the leading questions which are legitimate questions like you know do you prioritize taste of a life obviously not because you know you consider us do you consider yourself a, a logical and moral person yes well you know then does it do make you love sense? animals do you love animals <laughs> yeah then does it make is you know is it a bit of an oxymoron to say that you love animals but eat them at the same time mm-hmm. stuff like that and then obviously then you're going to be at that point you know you'll get into the conversations well yeah i do love them but you know convenience time meat is tasty yeah. though all those kind of arguments come up and then you just got tell it. them why those things aren't the factor yeah it's, then it's just like an easy game of i like to call it kind of bingo, kind of bingo but, yeah um meant in a lovingly way because we've had these kind of things over and over and over again you know like bacon is tasty and need the protein but you've got to like you've got to try and hear it for the very first time yes. each and every time be understanding and be understanding and try and work with them and come get onto the same page as them and think you know like say to them okay yeah i think I know where you're coming from because I used to think this way mm-hmm. and it's totally legit. It's a totally legit response to what you're giving me right now because we, you know, we've been conditioned from birth to think that it's okay and acceptable to eat animal products and we haven't even questioned it throughout our lives, have we? Um, and they always agree, don't they? They always agree at that point. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, we have been conditioned, haven't we? 
and then just so you're just sort of like working through the problem with them mm. that makes sense Chris so you kind of yeah yeah totally. you're taking them by the hair and leading them to their their own conclusion you want that's really important they have to come to that own conclusion in their heads you do not tell them eating animals is bad you ask them do you think it's ethical do you think it's ethical yes or no you know well, they, and yeah, if it that, is that, ethical that's what I was going to say yeah. it's like you, we none of us can force someone to be vegan all we can do is we can give them questions that they can't answer and they will then make themselves be vegan because they can't answer the questions that that's what that's pretty much why everyone goes vegan because they've run out of excuses and if we can just present those yeah. excuses to them and get them to try and answer them themselves and go away and think about that like, oh why couldn't i answer that question then that's going to get yeah. that's going to get them thinking more than chucking a fact at them by being like they- yeah, if you if you leave them on a question and they're going to go away trying to think of an answer to that question, then the that veganism is in their heads. Do you know what I mean? Whereas if you're just bombarding them with facts and figures, they're never going to remember all that. They're never going to remember like um, I don't know, ha- uh, cowspiracy facts or health and nutrition facts and stuff like that. But they will remember the question, mm. and then yeah. they can go and. <laughs> And then you don't have to do all the legwork. You don't have to do the hard work by giving them all the facts. You just leave them with a question. You plant that seed and then they'll go away, hopefully, and do a bit more research, you know, but you've yeah. Yeah. You put in the groundwork. Pra- to Give them practical advice. Yeah. You know, when you go to the supermarket, what meals do you like to eat? Well, did you know there's vegan versions of this? Or mm. especially for online activism, which I do, I'd say 80% of my activism is online activism. Um, I have a whole word document which is full of really useful videos and recipes and um it's just like basically a vegan starter kit which i can copy and paste over and over again to people tailor it a bit to their own specific problems and it's so effective and it it shows that you're willing actually yeah. yeah i will do and like you know you're willing to put in the work for them if they have no idea where to begin and that's really effective um can i um change the subject a bit because there were uh, previously in the chat brought up by Loon Vega was a really good point. Can we talk about activism, including young children? Oh yeah. yes, okay. Yeah, and um, I at um, at Bristol Veg Fest the other weekend, I saw a talk, and there's a company called Grow Up Vegan, and the lady um, was it, that was her bag. Like that's what she does. She she provides um, useful. Uh, resources and stuff specifically for children you know um nutrition charts and reward charts and helping mum and dad make meals and stuff like that and it's it's talking to children in a way that it makes it fun to be vegan and it's not scary so you're not going into graphic detail what age range is this like three and up until i don't know until like maybe young adult. okay because um on the live stream we did the other day with yeah. Isaac, um, one of the questions, I think it was pretty Liana that brought it up, mm-hmm. um, was, uh, okay, is it okay to show graphic footage to uh, older children 10 to 13 years? Good question. Um, and we kind of concurred that if, you know, if they are learning about the Holocaust at mm-hmm. school at that age, and they're seeing videos about that, then surely that is old enough for them to see That's graphic footage point. of animals. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it all depends, doesn't it? On it depends on sensitivity of the but child. But they but they are getting, are getting taught needed. that in school at that that kind of age. So yeah, what do you think, Chris? I mean, I I think it's I think it's fine because I mean, realistically, if we if we're living in a world where you eat animals, then everyone should know where your food comes from. You don't hide how you make a cake or how you make something else. So yeah. I, I think it. I personally think it should be. Uh, the the parents' duty to explain this and show the children as young an age as possible, so it can make its own decision really? on whether it, yeah. it thinks it's acceptable. So I think it might be, I think it might be a bit disturbing for children under ten, unless they're like quite mature for their age. Yeah, it depends on the child. I, I think cause it's just going to make them really upset, um, and they probably won't fully comprehend what's well, going on. I mean, I think, one thing I would say, because even I, probably, exactly. I could say one, one thing I'd say, because I've done the eye animal thing quite a lot. We we've got the virtual reality yeah. headsets. And um, we have a you know mixture of you know parents and kids and who you know let everyone come right. over to have a go on these things. And I always find the the kids are the ones that can handle it way more than the adults because the the younger kids they will mm. watch it and they'll be like you know they'll know it's gory or whatever. But they're never the ones that come out 
in tears or anything like that. They're always the one that just comes out, you know, with questions. It's always the adults that watch it that are, that can't last thirty seconds because the because the, they yeah. they've been indoctrinated to do this their whole life. Where the kids they haven't had mm-hmm. they, they haven't had chance to kind of realise what they're doing yet, so they don't make that kind of um, psychological connection that they're a part of that as much. They just see it as bad. Mm-hmm. Where a, where a parent or someone sees it as bad and they're a part That's of the problem. Right, yeah. They, they can't see that they're, you know, they are, they can't be held accountable for that. They don't, they're not going to be able to rationalise it because, you know, their parents are in control. So, yeah. And I, 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 never, they I, can't, because like, when you're, you're, when you're a kid, it's like your parents are God. Yes. There's nothing you can do until you're like in your early teens. So, yeah. And we, it's just going to really, I think it'll just really freak children out and like the yeah. fact that they can't do anything about it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean, it'll just give them nightmares. I mean, the one, the one, the one, one oh, sorry, Brad, what were you going to say? Like, okay. Some of the best conversations I have are with teenagers. You know, that is yeah, yeah, you yeah. shouldn't yeah. underestimate no, what they underestimate. can handle, but um, for really young children, I just think yeah, make not... it nice. Yeah. Appeal to their loving nature yeah. of animals. You know, you have all storybooks with beautiful, colourful illustrations. Yeah. Make it like that. Make it, Make it appeal, that yeah. you know you're gro- you're doing a great thing because you're growing up in a world where you love and respect animals and l- allow them to live their lives as they want to. You, there's no need. I mean, obviously, you don't want to hide what happens from them, so you can say, unfortunately, yeah. some people you have, to, you have to describe what it happens to yeah. eat animals. But the, I, I think personally, you don't need to show them graphic footage. No, you can just use it. the words. Yeah. I mean, how many times have we talked to people in the street, Reb, yeah. where we haven't needed to use graphic footage? Yeah, exactly. And they, they still got it yeah. just by the line of questioning that we use, you know, mm. or just by showing a vegan psychic picture. Illustrating, yeah, that's all you need. <laughs> illustrating yeah. the. Uh, it, it, it's, definitely, it's definitely not always essential to use graphic footage and I guess this goes kind of relates to the kind of online activism thing we're talking about as well because um, yeah. I'd say that, I'd always say that <laughs> if you're going to show graphic footage make sure there is a really strong reason why you are showing that specific piece of footage for example hmm. the 2016 exposed video I, I, I made it's very relevant because it's like well this is all UK this is what we pay for there's a real reason you're showing it if you're just showing any old bit of random footage just to shock people it's I don't think that's as constructive as as having a real reason to do it you know like I I think you've got to be tactical with it and the um the artedness of it the uh oh yeah definitely and also can I just say um I I saw a talk a couple months back now by Dr. Melanie Joy, and she mentioned a thing which I'd never heard of before called secondary, uh, uh, secondary stress. No, what's Second- PTSD? Post-traumatic stress. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This was secondary I listened stress. I to this as well. Traumatic disorder. What how is that different from post-traumatic stress? So it's when you don't witness it firsthand. So you you are exposed to footage or. Um, um, yeah. images of graphic violence and it really affects you and she said if if people are not asking to see that kind of thing on their Facebook wall mm. and suddenly it pops up and it's in their well, face yeah. and they are getting secondary stress from that yeah, this yeah. may be carnists this may be vegans yeah it has the same effect and to some people it just makes them so depressed that they shut down yeah and so it you closes have to the... be careful what you're sharing yeah, yeah, I, 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 I would agree with uh, that. I think you should. Uh, yes. If they've got a choice to sit, like in the Cuba Truth or yeah, 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 yeah. they can t- they can look away. But yeah. I think I don't know. Is it different on Facebook though? I suppose it is because I mean I still do it. I must say I do still share graphic footage, but it was just a very interesting thing that she brought up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I, I think people, you know, I think the sensible thing would be. I mean, you know, I think if you're if you're a vegan activist, you've got to expect that other people are going to share this stuff. So online, you should make a conscious effort to hide people that show this or just, you know, don't look at the videos, you know, because I think, you know, if, if you're if you're vegan and you've got a load of vegans on your Facebook, you're going to see slaughterhouse footage on a regular basis, on a yeah. daily basis. Like mine's full of it. I can't scroll down like two or three things without seeing a live video from the saves or something. It doesn't draw people in as much, I don't think, as asking them questions and engaging with them. Like, obviously, the best, I think the best form of activism is engaging with someone one to one. Me too. Taking that the is time the best. to get taking to their the time, level. Yeah, t- taking the time to get on the same page as them. Yes. And then 
working together to reach a conclusion from there. Yeah. That's all it is. Like, it's as simple as that. Because they're going to agree that it's unethical. They, like nobody in their right mind, unless they're a nihilist, is going to agree that it's ethical to stab yeah. animals needlessly just for just for taste pleasure, right? Nobody's like in their right mind is going to agree oh. to that, are they? So unless you're roaming, it's Milano. really on the same page as you, and on 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 that respect first, and then move on from there. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree. Yeah, one one on one activism is always always the most constructive, which is why I'm. One thing, yeah, what, uh, an idea for people that want to get more involved with that, if you haven't already, start a, um, an outreach stall in your town. Just get a table, get a load of leaflets, set up in town, yeah. and chat to people. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we, we do it every single week with Devon Animal Saves, and you know, we have really good effects. And, or you know, if you don't, don't want to set up a stall and want to get on your own, do what Emma and Reb do. Just go and talk to people. Just you know, make some little street interviews or whatever, and just get out there and yeah, chat direct to people. Mm. Definitely think that's effective, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, as, as far as the kids thing as well, I just want to state yeah. that if you are looking at good education for kids, Bite Size Vegan has got a really good kids series. Cool. It's worth checking out. If so, she, she kind of like, you know, friendlies up all the, you know, like stuff like about dairy or, you know, meat or honey or whatever in nice kind of kid style videos. So I think that's a really good educational Agreed. Yeah. Um, yeah. The yeah, like I said before, I think it's it it, it is okay to sh it is okay to show graphic footage to maybe ten to thirteen, you know, ten eleven upwards. Mm. But again, I think you could just mm. you could just use the the Socratic method yeah. to get through to them. And did you see that Kelly Carbstrong video that he did yeah, where he talked was, to that little kid on the bike? That was great. No, I don't think I actually. You see that, Chris? Yet. He was so patient and calm and lovely with him, wasn't he? Yeah, it's just like, do do you agree with this? Yeah. Do you think it's do you think it's right? It's it's not it's not okay, is it, mate? Oh, and the little kid, the kid, was like, had, no, the, no, the kid no. had a bit of basic knowledge about yeah. it already, didn't he? And then Joey just saw that you know he knew a little bit and was interested and was just really gentle with him. Yeah, and said, you know, you don't want to you don't want to hurt animals, do you? Do you, bro? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you, bro? You don't want to. Not right, eh? Not right. It's not ethical, is it? And then give them solutions as well. So say, you know, yeah. instead of this, why don't you ask your parents to buy this? Or, you know, why don't you learn these simple recipes and impress your family? Yeah. yeah. So something we should we should probably talk about, because it seems to be a big subject in the chat at the moment, is, um, well, okay. understanding the, uh, the logic of, you know, of, of debate and argumentation a little bit, we can maybe discuss how name the trait is oh. quite a useful tool for people to filter kind of arguments through because I, I do yeah. find that's very very useful there seems to be loads and loads of comments about that i think yeah. mainly about actual justice warriors <laughs> latest video but we don't we, 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 can, <laughs> we, we, we can discuss that later i actually i actually wrote a reply to his um rebuttal um just in case anyone wants to go and read it um he has well, like, Twitter, he, he hasn't actually replied to it which is which is strange he seems to have replied to everyone else's oh my God, he, but he didn't reply he's yeah. so weird it's like he's I, I can't believe, like, because Isaac oh, commented just, just on his on his video, and like, just totally annihilated him because like, he's going on about like you can't use the cars analogy, you know, like a more yeah. um we, we, because we, more we could talk uh, about this for hours. A killed in car accidents. Yeah, huh? it's basically I, I don't even know. He's basically saying that wheat what? is wheat is unnecessary and for our diet because you can pick another plant, but then it's just like what so. That means bananas are unnecessary because we can pick another plant. Something else is blah, blah, blah. it kind of completely ignores the yeah, fact that we need wheat, that we need multiple plants with multiple nutrients. Of plants. Um, yeah. it's, it's a silly, Chris. It's a he's silly using habit. the word wheat in place of plants. Yeah, he's like basically pick, he, he's picking one individual plant, completely ignoring the fact that we can pick our nutrients from multiple plants. No matter what plant we pick, yeah. harm will be caused. So therefore, it's the, it's ethical yeah. across the board, no matter which one we pick. It doesn't make any difference. I mean, if we want to go into that argument, I can dig it up and see what I wrote. But it was uh, it was basically about initial and, and like, secondary harm. But yeah, yeah, we can go into that later. Like, I mean, <laughs> I've been listening to a bit of um, Sapiens uh, ebook and Sapiens: The uh, Brief History of Man, I think it is, and it goes into a lot about um, 
the foragers, the hunter-gatherers and people like that before we had the um, agriculture revolution and stuff and like we had to farm and stuff. Um, they they feasted on a large you know spectrum of different foodstuffs like they hunted a bit yes they fished but many predominantly they all their calories came from starches and fruits and plant matter basically and then when when we were um when we had the ag agricultural revolution farm so basically like this i don't know where this crop came from wheat you know it's just like this long grass that people discovered they could make into cereals which could feed them and suddenly they realized oh shit we have to now build homes instead of you know migrating around looking for the, this food and stuff we've got to build homes around a farm because this crop is just so fucking delicate to kind of you know it is you've got to have all the factors right you've got to, it's, it's, it gets really thirsty doesn't want too much sun like you've got to keep the pests at bay and stuff like this it's just hmm. it's like I, I understand where where he's coming from, actually, Justice Warrior, in in so far as you know, like to grow wheat is it can be destructive. But there's but there's no actual evidence to say. I think it's it's like what is it like one in a thousand? I don't know one field mice in oh, every thousand kilometers or something, every thousand mm. hectares of land. So it's just like you know the death toll is really low anyway. Yeah. Actually, I, just to get out of the way, I'm just going to look up what I wrote for my argument against it. Because ba ba no, I, the basics of it was, is that first off, you know, because he, he was, what, what was it? He was saying, um, if, it's, no, if it's not okay to, for animals to die to eat meat, then it's not okay for animals to die to eat wheat. So that, that, that's, that's his argument, basically. No, no, no. That's the argument he made. No, 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 the argument goes like this. No, 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 this is the argument. Uh, sorry, yeah, that's his argument. Yeah, that's yeah. that's Act of Justice Warrior's argument. Yeah, that's what I mean. But Isaac's, Isaac's argument is okay. We accept a certain amount of deaths per year for driving cars. Yeah, yeah, for necessity. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And ca yeah. driving cars is not necessary, but we we accept. You know, driving we need it to advance civilization. Otherwise, we're all going to be like stuck in the woods or whatever. Yeah. Well, but basically, what, what, I, what I did... I, so we accept I, a certain I, amount of deaths per year from driving, um, and that's not necessary. Therefore, we have to, like, logically, it logically follows that we have to accept a certain amount of deaths for growing crops, because growing crops is absolutely necessary for us to survive. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I just took a bit of a different view of it. What I basically did is, first off, you look at the initial harm caused to either the animal or plant before it becomes meat and obviously the difference between the animal and the plant is sentience so, so therefore before we even look at secondary harm it is more ethical to kill the plant than it is the animal so that's that then you look yeah. obviously the secondary harm at present it's not possible or practicable we're using the vegan definition for us to obtain crops that don't result in some sort of death be that land clearance pesticides harvest we can't ask the yeah, animals the to leave and we don't all currently have vertical farms around to purchase from. So is the killing of the animals for plants ethical? No, but the situation is currently necessary. In the same way, um, if we required animal products, the secondary harm would also be unethical, but justified for the same reason, because we have no choice. This would also apply if humans were killed during the secondary harm, because we have no other choice, yeah. so we have to do it. So that yeah. is all logically consistent. So that's, so that's, yeah. There's no it is consistent because if we're of ourselves, we would accept our death if we had to, if growing crops, if we had to die for growing crops mm. and we accepted that was necessary, then we, then, then there's the, that, that's absolutely consistent. Yeah. Isn't it? it yeah. It, 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 we, uh, so that, that's consistent. That's animals, some animals might die for growing crops, but we'd accept the death, we'd accept their own death for ourselves if we had to die to grow crops. So. Yeah, exactly. And, and, yeah, so, and, and when you sum it all up as well, you know, the, the secondary harm is is always unethical, but we do it because it's necessary. But the initial harm will always side with the plant. So either way, the 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 actual process in in total will always side with plants being more ethical because the initial harm will always side with the plant being more ethical and not the animal. So plants win either way. Yeah. <laughs> and they're talking about the wheat thing as well. All he's doing is confusing the point and using one plant instead of looking that we yeah. you know, the fact we need and it's, and you multiple know what nutrients. Else as well, do you know what else it is? It's a red herring yeah. because it takes from the fact 
that they that actual justice warrior is still paying to have animals needlessly death stabbed because he wants to eat meat yeah so basically the argument's trash it's, it's just it's a, all in all it's a red herring yeah. isn't it it's, it's, it's just he's just really clutching yeah. at straws because he lost he just wanted to make sure that he could get i want to get him i might tweet him and say we're in no, I don't want to get him on. No, no. Anyway, we've done. We, we, we've done. We've done with. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's. Yeah. That, that's him. That's him done. Right? We, we can. We can move on now. <laughs> yeah. Um. Cy Smith said. Um. They would just like some advice on the best online places to. Um. To be active. Let me just find the. the... Before we go on to that, yes, sorry, yes. just to just to close off the previous segment, Chris, because yeah. I don't know if everyone knows about that debate that we've just been discussing with Justice Warrior. Probably not. No, we need to go to OG confused everybody. channel. Uh, OG, I'll write it in the chat, Rev. OG Mizzen. Yeah, go to uh, OG Mizzen's channel. In, he basically debated him the yeah. other day. You, you he debated that. him a lot in a live stream. But it was um, him, Vegan Revolution, and Actual Justice Warrior. And then Isaac came on for a bit because uh, Owen and vr they didn't really get to a good job of sort of explaining what name the trait is um but they kind of they they recoiled it and isaac sort of like saved the day but yeah it kind of isaac sort of like to debunk actual justice warriors logic in that video so check it out yeah cool yeah. Yeah, let's move on to like, rev what, what were you saying again so best online platforms or something um i'll just get the comment up real quick uh, hi Rebecca, I'm new to activism and your advice on all places to do this would be appreciated. Okay, so well, your, um, your own for me personally, own Facebook, I, yeah, I, yeah, Facebook, but I actually do Tinder and now I've moved on <laughs> to Grazer to turn vegetarians vegan and also OkCupid. Um, oh, these are, so I'm only talking to men. But basically, in my profile on those things, so I I know <laughs> I have um, I put up that I want to talk about veganism, and then I match with anyone who says they're an animal lover, anyone who's got pictures of them either cuddling a dog or holding a dead fish, yeah, <laughs> or like people who say, oh, yeah. I love cheese. I'll match with anyone like that, and then talk to them, and um, it's been so successful, yeah, and people are really into it, and they're surprised at it. I really admire yeah. your tenacity and your um, patience because I oh god I tried it, job I tried it for like a, I tried it for a month and then had to have a break from it then went back to it for a month and it was just so goddamn frustrating and yeah just constant because like if you don't reply straight away yeah they get bored of the conversation so it's very it's it's nonstop I've got yeah. like a three day backlog of messages I tell you but. But it turns so many people vegan so on Tinder. Many. And the seriously. thing is now, not, not only are they vegan, now they're vegan activists. Yeah. They're like, hey, I turned my housemate vegan. Have you got any good documentaries I can share? Like, It's so good. So if you are single, or if you're not single, but your partner doesn't mind, yeah. set up a Tinder account and get active on there. What other platforms would you recommend for Smith? Um, I mean... Uh, just the eyes. I mean, Twitter. Um, there's, a so really, there's actually a... Um, I can't remember what the account's called, but if you go onto the Vegan Activists um, YouTube, he's actually, he links, uh, he's basically got a whole video about doing Twitter activism, and there's actually a bot on Twitter oh. account, which will tell you if someone's yeah. written something like, I'm thinking about oh, going vegan or something like that. And then you can just reply to them. Yeah, and get the it information. Is it? I put yeah. it in the chat, Chris, it's called Vegasist. It's really great. I use that one too. Yeah. yeah, a lot. I think a lot of people know about this already. Um, in the they probably do in the chat. Like, uh, yeah, it's been around for some time. That that uh, Twitter bot thing. It's so good. But also, I think uh, with Twitter activism, mm. uh, it's good to try and provoke a bit of attention from the skeptic community or whatever. Ah, go and, like, that a bit. Go more. on. You know, you know, like the, the the roaming millennials, the bearings, the Andy Warskis. So controversial people, carnists. Controversial. Uh, yeah, if they're outspoken about being carnist mm. or, you know, anti-vegan, then sure, like, that's, uh, you know, they're, they're fair game, you know. But, um, you know, I don't know, like, people like uh, that guy T that Owen debated, mm -hmm. oh, he yeah. wasn't really, he didn't really put up any sort of uh, anti-vegan stuff on his YouTube or anything like that. He just got in contact, like, him and Owen got to talking, I don't know, from comments on their videos or the live streams or whatever. 
and it was brought up there and that's how they had a discussion and stuff and i think you could probably do stuff like that on twitter as well so these sort of big names that are skeptics or anti-sjw sort of types that um you know like that is kind of a fashion at the moment isn't it those kind of the, the, the skeptic they call it the skeptic community on youtube getting their attention i think on twitter and on youtube by making you know like response videos and stuff like that i, I would say that, that you, i think it's going to be quite the, the easiest way to get involved though online is just like is facebook and your facebook friends and stuff and just be be clever with some clever state thought, thought provoking statuses you know that, that, i mean um like I used to do a thing called Sunday evening thoughts. I don't know if you remember what I used to do that. Um, like I used to write like oh. uh, like I remember once I wrote to something like um, I was it ten million dogs killed for Yulin Dog Meat Festival equals good. Uh, ten million. I can't remember what it was now. The stat for turkeys at Christmas something ridiculous. And I can't remember what it was. But yeah, I basically just put the different yeah, so the different amounts killed and then put one equals good, one equals bad. And then just put Sunday evening thoughts underneath it, and it was good because I wasn't—I <laughs> wasn't attacking anybody. I was just making—I was just stating kind of like a fact. Kind of. Yeah, I was just, I was just stating a fact. Is that kind of like a kind of. Yeah, just just like a, like, like, like the tick box, the tick box, the uh, checklist. Yeah, oh, have yes. you seen that vegan psychic thing where it's just like, what is it? Uh, see, Logic. I love animals. Tick. I love dogs and cats. Tick. Oh, yeah. I love. Cows, chickens, and pigs. Ticks. I eat cows, chickens, and pigs. Yeah, but was Tick, it, I mean, I don't I, eat. I think doing stuff no, like that. Like I think doing stuff like that's really good because one, it's thought provoking. You can create, you can create some good debate. Secondly, it's not confrontational in any way because you're just literally yeah. giving stats. So you can even just put like, um, you know, here's some stats. Um, discuss what discuss why one's okay one's the other i think doing stuff like that is really effective in just getting getting because conversation is great as long as, as long as you can guide the conversation yeah. then using what emma said using the socratic method once people start commenting then you can just continue to ask them questions until they suddenly realize that they can't answer things or they they contradict themselves or something and um i find that's i find that's really really effective to be honest i, I find that the best thing to the best way to be act, you know, an activist online is always just be super polite, only ever talk in facts, you know, ne you know never, never be the person to kind of jump in and call someone an asshole or something, you know, and, I mean, unless they've really asked for it, then yeah, they're fair game. But I mean, generally, yeah. just be like always super positive, super happy, always talk in facts and no one can ever kind of sway from and you will find you'll gain a lot of um, respect from people i've got so many people on my facebook now which used to be my biggest trolls and now they, they're all listen to me they're yeah, all yeah. taking what i say and they'll yeah. message me saying like oh you'll be happy i bought soya milk the other day or something um just because I've, yeah that's great just, just because i've always been polite i've never attacked them i've always been respectful i always just like be write, patient yeah be, yeah you need yeah. to be super patient that's definitely a good tip be super super patient realize you're gonna to have to say the same things over and over again realize that stupid oh, questions yeah. to some people aren't stupid some people genuinely think plants have feelings. Yeah. don't treat don't treat people like they're stupid i the way i look at it the way i sort of see myself in this movement i feel like i'm like the big sister yeah. Like whenever I'm talking to someone, I'm just like I'm talking to you as if I'm your big sister. And I know what's best for you, and I care about you. And so you know, just have a bit of common sense now, please. Like you're being <laughs> silly. Turn. You're being silly, oh, little bro. I just, no, I, I just want to answer. Just, I just want to answer something in the chat. That, that, that's my comment. I just want to answer something in the chat. Uh, MW2S best said, "Don't understand how you guys say yeah. talking facts when you say humans are herbivores or that veganism will solve world hunger." I never say that veganism oh, will solve yeah, world I hunger, ever. And I, that, and I also will right. happily debate whether uh, humans are herbivores or opportunist omnivores. So some people might say that. I don't. Uh, I look at facts because I know is, okay. even, if, even if all the food was available, uh -huh. there's still government things that mean that food distribution might not be even or anything like that. All we say is there is food available and it could if the food system was organised better. Yeah. But yeah, I, 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 never, I don't make that claim. I used to. I, I will admit that I used to say that, but I don't say that it will solve yeah, world no, hunger anymore. I, 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 I just would like to add to that as well. Um, yeah, because what was it? The first one was... Um, humans are herbivores. What was the first one? Yeah, humans are herbivores thing. 
I used to say this as well, and I realised that the, the mistake is what you should do when people say, okay, we're omnivores, go by their logic. Do you know what I say? Go by their logic, because if, okay, we are, om okay, we're, okay, we're om omnivores, we can either eat meat, uh, we need to get, but we need to get the nutrients from plants, like, you would agree with that, like, we can't survive without plants, wouldn't you? And they always say yes. But we could survive without meat, couldn't we? Yes, we could, because there's nothing in uh, meat that isn't in plants. So therefore, um, the argument that um, we're herbivores or we're omnivores, it doesn't really matter because we don't need to do it in this day and age. In 2017, we don't need to kill animals for food. We might have done in the past, but we don't need to now. And we can survive quite happily and healthily just on a plant-based diet. So why wouldn't you do that? Yeah, it doesn't matter it, if we're herbivores, omnivores. Yeah, or it doesn't matter about the past. It doesn't matter. Like, don't yeah. like revert to uh, nature fallacies and traditions and stuff like that go by what you can do today and in the western world you can just go to the you know you can drive or cycle or walk to your local supermarket and just walk down one aisle instead of the other pick up the plant-based milk instead of the cow's milk it's as simple as that i mean yeah what the fuck are you talking about saying you know like we're because we're omnivores therefore we have to we're obliged to eat meat or something no mm. <laughs> well said yeah, I think that kind of sums it up. Yeah, I mean, you can go on for arguments for days on whether we're herbivore or omnivore or whatever. But yeah, like Emma said, it, do, it doesn't. In the, end, in the end, it doesn't really matter. Don't go down that rabbit yeah. hole. With me, that's in the words you of don't Lincoln, want to go down that rabbit hole with. Me. Yeah, in the words of Lincoln Park, <laughs> in the end, it doesn't even matter. There you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the wise words of Chester matter, Bennington. It's not relevant. That's the you've got to make. You've got to just uh, realize that it's it's about relevance to the here and to the now so the fact that we may or may not be omnivores isn't relevant because we can live quite happily without eating meat and animal products we can do that evidenced by the millions of vegans that are living in the world right now yeah so just keep it simple like that like you don't you don't need to go on to you know you don't need to know all these facts and figures about why we could why we're herbivores why we might be omnivores you don't need to look into the, any of the studies or the dental records to sh you know to show that oh we we ate starches we didn't eat, mm. you know yeah. whatever well, actually, like, actually, don't want to go down that rabbit hole with them. there was a good example i heard i can't remember who yeah. said it someone i heard it recently and it was something like um like to prove kind of you know how irrelevant it is it's like if you were a vampire say when you required blood and someone came up with a blood substitute which means you didn't have to bite people's necks and kill them anymore it would the right thing to do is to take the supplement and have it. So it's the same kind of yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that would be the yeah. So even if we were carnivores, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, if, if, there's another, if there's another alternative, then we should probably take it because I, no one's going to win an argument of we're a part of the uh, circle of life and food chain and no, our, our killing is you know, a part of the ecosystem. Like, because we've gone way beyond that. That, is such a, uh, that circle of life. It's just like it's so easy to debunk. Like it's just like, well, are you are you actually are you living within the ecosystem right now? Do you own a laptop computer? Are you you're using the internet right now? Have you got a car? Have you got? Is there a local supermarket you can just go to down the road? If so, then you, like circle of life is just such a redundant argument. Yeah. Because mm. you have a choice. Like it, people, the the animals in the circle of life, they don't have a choice. Yeah, we 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 removed ourselves from the circle of life years ago. If there, if there even is one, yeah, yeah we're right, nothing to do that. Um, yeah, um, I'm trying to think what other bits we were going to going to discuss. I mean, did did we did we want to discuss uh, the actual name the trophy well, people to kind of tell them what it is? Or so, hang on, have we covered? Have we covered? Um, we've covered a bit about direct action. We've covered online activism. We've covered. Yeah, well, I mean, Once I mean one why, don't we let, why don't we let everyone in the, in the chat decide? So we can either, a few things I want to talk about. Well, basically, there's either the, the logic of argumentation and talking about name the trait. I was going to talk also yeah, about yeah. whether some marches and protests are actually worthwhile doing or whether they're sometimes a waste of time. Mm. Um, yeah, because you haven't. Yeah. Um, what other things? We made a little list, but I, can't, I haven't got it up. <laughs> Have you got the chat up that we wrote in there? What I wrote in there. Yes, I would. Yeah, well. 
you said do 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 trigger words we've done that, yeah, done that. marches demonstrations yeah. well should we go into a little bit about that online I'd like to questions. talk about um, the yeah. protests and the demos and stuff. Yeah. Yes, well, please well, begin. I, well, I think my kind of view on some stuff is um, there seems to be like people organising marches like all the time for like various things and everything, and yeah. a lot of the time, I think they're a complete waste of time. Um, there's like marching down the road in a town where there's like you know, where no one knows what you're on about and. Um, there's no kind of, you know, basically, I think if you're going to march, there needs to be somewhere to march to, because you need to make, it's all about making a statement. If you have, if you've got no press, and you're just marching down a street for no reason, what actually are you trying mm. to achieve by doing this? Because I, like, I saw a march not yeah, long ago, well, that was like at seven o'clock at night, ac across Torquay Beach, and yeah. people were holding these placards that you couldn't even read from a distance, and there was no one around. And I was like, is this really worthwhile doing? Yeah. Like, and, and uh, the other day, this, the other day I went to London, and it was the day of the the attacks, and we were. Um, it was quite. This was early on during the day before it all happened, but um, we were just come off uh, Tower Bridge, and we were heading towards uh, Westminster, uh, that sort of area. Mm -hmm. And I saw um, to the left of me as we were driving past. I was. I was passenger mm. um these people holding cards and stuff and they're having holding some demonstration i was like reading the placards that it was something like uh, it's wrong you know it's wrong to eat cats and dogs the the cat and dog made or something like this like mm. they're they're protesting against that yeah and it was just like 20 people or something holding these holding these like man-made signs you know they just got their crayons out or whatever mm -hmm. And I was like, what the fuck is this? And I went onto Facebook before there must be some kind of organised demo for this because I really wanted to get out of the car and go and interview them because I thought, ah, oh, yeah. this will, I'm, I'm sure there'll be a few, a few people, you know, people are, the, the, these people aren't vegan, right? So I wanted to mm, expose yeah, yeah, some inconsistencies yeah. there and I thought it'd be a really good video to make, but we had to drive somewhere else and mm. I couldn't get back in time. Um, but yeah, I went to the fa Facebook, tried to type in, I don't know, whether they were protesting Yulin or what it was. It wasn't, the point I'm trying to get across is that there wasn't like a key slogan or something to remember that protest by. It was just like a hodgepodge of different signs and I was trying to work out what is that. And I was driving past in the car, do you know what I mean? So to get people's attention, you've got to make it really graphic and iconic. And you've got to like campaign it properly on Facebook and make sure everyone knows about it. Otherwise, what's the point? Because nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna like pay any attention to it. They're just gonna think you're crazy, like some crazy SJW in the street, like yeah. protesting. But that's kind of what I find. Um, like there seems to be right. there seems to be marches all over the country. But like I think if you're if you're gonna march, like I said, you you need a point to march to, and you need to organise some sort of press and some sort of like. It need, there needs to be a point to it, or, or you're just a load of people walking down a road shouting, and no one knows what the hell you're on about, and it just, yeah. it doesn't do anything, it makes, you know, it's like wasted time where you could have just been like, set up an outreach stall and been more effective. Um, I think people just need to kind of, I don't know, I just, I, I just seen like loads of them recently that just seem to be a bit of a kind of waste or kind of, you know. It's like, you know, the, the, animal, the Animal Rights March in London, that's kind of got a point, because like you're, you're marching to... Yeah, like so down, yeah, to, yeah. You know, to to a place it's where a big, big one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think that's okay. that's worthwhile. But we're we gonna say. Volhan, no, sorry, I've got to give a shout out to Volhan V because he's donated two dollars. Thank you. Good one, Volhan. Yeah, thanks, Volhan. Yes, yeah, so what what were you gonna say? Get Volhan to come on the live stream. Maybe we should start offering that, like people, big donations. They think I'm joining the live yes. streams. <laughs> I'd love to talk to um, fucking oh, who's in the chat that we've never we don't even know who they are. But it's it's Judge Veg, people like Judge Veg and um, John Yin. John Yin. Um, we we what, don't know who they are. Why, why don't we um, you know, why don't we um, start taking questions from people? I think because we we've, we've talked about a lot of things, but what, yes. what, what do people want to discuss as far as effective well, activism goes? What do people can want I to know? Just finish up on the, the march thing. Yeah, yeah. If you've, Sorry, if you've Chris, got, if you've got I, some more to say, yeah, go for it. Can I just finish up my point about that? Yeah, I don't. Sure. I haven't discussed anything on that. Which was, uh, yeah, I think 
to sum up with that, it's got to, if you're going to do a, a demo or a protest, it's got to be big and it's got to be iconic. Like the save movement is iconic. And the and the big animal rights march in London is iconic. So there's no because we uh, did like a stupid little protest at the Norwich last year for the what we're that about? pig the uh, pig. Oh no! Festival. You see, this is where we disagree, Emma. Because I thought pork stop was great. Well, could just explain. And what I would pork do stop, another one. Just explain what pork stop is, and what it was. Yeah. And I I sorry, Chris, because you want to move on. No, no, it's fine. No, no, I, 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 I can say something about this as well. What are you going to say, Ray? Um, I was just last September we went. To, there was a pig eating festival, and it was called Pork Stock. And pork so, stock, stock, yeah. Mm. And so a bunch of us went down there, and we turned Signs. into Pork Stock, right? And we we drew pork up stop we, with a p on the end stop it yeah <laughs> we drew up these beautiful signs i've got some on the wall there but like we drew, drew yeah. happy pictures of pigs yeah. sad pictures of pigs and like messages and we stood outside the front as people were driving in so that they see our our banners and such the the idea was we wanted to talk to people wasn't it but we couldn't but talk we to them in the end, thing. unfortunately and what all it was doing was people, oh. some people were like not driving into the event but not because I, th- I think it was just because they were more scared, like, oh, protesters, are they violent? Yeah, but you're you know making I mean? an so... assumption there, because actually, like, I knew, I knew um, one well, of my um, colleagues' brothers went you can't, to... You can't talk to them. So no, no, can't. but check this out. One of my colleagues' brother actually went to the event, yeah. and inside, apparently, a big buzz about it, all these protesters outside. Really? Yeah, and it was putting people off, and, like, kids were like, what's going on? Why are there pigs? Are these pigs? Are these pigs? So, okay. So All it right. was actually effective, even though we didn't get to talk to yeah. anyone. I would say, yeah, I, I, would yeah, say I would actually say that, that those kind of demonstrations are <laughs> fine because you've got a point. If you're like protesting like an event or something, like, you know, like me going yeah. to protest like the horse racing, for example, well, those kind of things have got a point. Yeah, it, well, it's when people just demonstrate in the middle of a street for no real reason. Okay. They just demonstrate for the sake of demonstrating or they march for the sake of marching. You want to be able to get something out of it, like a conversation with yeah. someone. Otherwise, there's just no point, you know, it, as long as you get some conversation. Oh, we actually ended up, we did talk to some people. We talked to the stewards. Oh, the stewards, yeah. they were stewarding in people uh, I wouldn't say on the road. Have to have a conversation. And that was, we had some really interesting conversations with them. Yeah. And I think, and they Paul talked to, nice. Paul talked to one of them for like a good hour or so, because mm-hmm. he was just bored anyway with like holding his, his flask of tea or whatever outside in the cold. Paul had a really good conversation with him about um, how, how he's, you know, got a lot fitter and leaner as a vegan mm. and all the health benefits. And like, this guy was like really into it, you know, he's like, oh, this is really cool. Like you, you guys are really actually nice people. There you go. <laughs> and nice. this is just like the stewards, you know, and they, I, I think it's, I don't, we, th- I don't think you necessarily, awesome. I don't think you necessarily have to have conversations with people to be effective. Because when, when we go to, the, when I do uh, the horse racing protest, yeah. for example, hardly anyone talks to us, but everyone sees the signs and everyone reads the signs. And I think that is enough. I think, you know, as long as you're okay. giving people something to think about, you don't, conversation isn't necessarily, you know, like people do silent protests and they're really effective sometimes. So, I, yeah, I mean, conversation's great. If you can have more conversation, well, great. But the, I wouldn't say it was, it's, it's unaffected. The way I, see, but, I mean, I wasn't there. I don't know well, the way I see, saw it or whatever. The, but. the way I see it is the people will talk about it and they'll think, oh, what's that, you know, what's going on? But I don't think that's enough to change them. That'll just, it will plant a seed, yeah. But I think you're going to get them more quickly to veganism if you are able to have that one-to-one conversation with them. There's no like, there's no substitute for that. No, there's, there, there really isn't. There's oh. not, but it, isn't it better to have given people a small message than no message at all? Depends what you think is going to be more um, efficient. Because I mean, like you know, are you going to are you going to are you going to convince like a thousand people to sort of maybe, or, or how I don't know, a hundred people see that protest right and they read the signs. Yeah. Out of those a hundred people, ten people might consider veganism. But, uh, I, you know, not today, maybe like in a month's time or whatever. I ain't got time to think about that right now. Do you know what I'm saying? But if you think, if you think about it. If we one-to-one conversation with someone, that person could be like literally, okay, when can I, I need to, I, I might start this in a week or I might start this tomorrow kind of thing. You could get, you could get yeah, into yeah. that situation. I mean, that, that's totally fine. But you've got, you got, you got, you've got, you've got to bear in mind that at that certain situation, there could be people there that you will never, ever see again. So that is 
the only opportunity you've got and it's better to leave them with something little than to have left them with nothing at all still yeah conversation's better obviously if you can get into a conversation by all means get into a conversation but i think even leaving someone with a little thought is still you know even if they don't go vegan immediately or they go yeah. vegan for, for a year you've at least started the ball rolling so i think in that way it's still better that you've given them a little bit even if not the whole thing but i think you don't want to dedicate all your activism time on stuff like that like that the, the point i'm trying to get across is don't spend all your time on that kind of activism because i don't think it's it will plant the seeds but i think you should concentrate more of your time on the one-to-one -one conversations because they are the ones that are actually like they're the you get the tangible oh, yeah, results yeah. from if, 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 if we're looking at pure efficient efficiency and how to make the world yeah, go yeah. vegan quicker then yeah conversations as many conversations as possible um oh. but yeah i mean as publicly as possible yeah you know but obviously <laughs> as well you know, if you can i i think you know like, like i said i think demonstrations in that sense are still worthwhile um i wouldn't say that was you know, they're a particular waste of time it's more it's more when you just get like you know just random marches for no reason in like you know in places where it doesn't matter like there's nothing there's no one to protest to like you know the march will finish you're like well what have you achieved you've had no press there's there's no like local councillor or anything that's aware of what you're doing, like you know what yeah, what are you what are you fair. trying to aim at the end of it besides being like well done guys we marched, like that, that that's what I think if you're gonna march you, <laughs> yeah. you need to make sure uh, let's go and have let's go to a restaurant and like have fun times let's go and eat some tempeh and yeah. say tan burgers and hang out oh wouldn't we do a great job because some some, I know some that's marches not, won't even like, fly at people how? they'll just march you won't even give you information so you don't even, you've got like two seconds to look at their banner to try and process what they're marching about and then yeah, if they don't give you any literature then you're like well what the hell was that about like that made no difference to anything ever so um yeah if you basically if you're going to do a march just make sure it's organized and there's a point to it I think that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Should we move on? Or yeah, we can do. So should, should we start taking some questions um, from people? Because uh, maybe we yeah, should. Yeah, just... I just want to also say though, let uh, Rebecca speak. Yeah, <laughs> Byron Murphy hates me now because he's he's misconstrued something I've said. What? Can you correct this? <laughs> what what, what, what <laughs> have you said? Annoying. What you said? Byron, now? please. <laughs> what, what Byron, why are you said? annoying? All I said is, uh, all I said is, ages ago in the chat, I I don't want to copulate with carnists, right? And now Byron's like, oh, you look down on everyone. No one can live up to your standards. That's not what I said at all. It's just personal preference. What's going on? Yeah, actually, that is, that is true. It's your personal preference. It doesn't mean I, I think I'm veganer than everyone or I look down on people. It's just like you've got, you know, you've got a personal preference to, you might like taller men to shorter men. Yeah, yeah. Byron, I don't understand why we're yeah, wrong. What's happening? Some people, no, no, some people don't like people that eat lots of though. garlic because they smell of garlic. Preference. So, yeah. It is your personal preference, and like you should be entitled to choose whatever partner you. I know, but Byron to... hates me now. <laughs> I'm going to be. Oh. <laughs> Byron, to come round. It's not. I mean, it, this is this this is this is simple. Like, obviously, you can have you can date whoever you fuck you want. Like, <laughs> it's your personal preference whether you want to copulate with a carnist or not. Oh. I mean, um, oh, right. So we... I I I have copulated with. Not harnessed, but um, like I've dated people that aren't vegans, yeah. right? It never really lasts very long uh, if they don't want to go into the ethics of veganism. If they, if they try and sort of shy away from it and stuff, like it gets to a certain point. Of, uh, I'm not going to name names or anything, but it gets to a certain stage in the relationship, uh, say like a month or two. Mm. And then it's, you know, you have to have this conversation because it's all very well and good them saying, oh, yeah, don't worry, I won't eat meat around you and stuff like that when I come to your house. But oh, in private, they're doing it and they, mm. you know, they, they feel guilty for it because they don't want to bring it up with you and stuff. But um, unless you can have that conversation with them and, like, make them, unless they, unless they can face reality mm. and go through and... Uh, completely understand what it is they're contributing to um unless they can do that well firstly if they can't do that then i, I just have to break it off but if they do do that if they if they and they're fully aware of what they're contributing to and they're still doing it mm. there's no way i'm going to be with that person it's difficult you know what it's, I mean? it's, a, it's, a moral, it's not going to last <laughs> it's, it's, you have to have morals in 
like that align with your partner surely yeah it's not oh, that you not... think you're better than them it's that you you want to live like with someone who you are in harmony with well yeah like veganism is like a baseline for all that stuff because if you if you think if you if you're living with the inconsistency that yeah. it's okay to love animals and eat them at the same time what other inconsistencies are you living with that could be worse than that or uh, sorry that could be nothing is, is as worse as, as that yeah, yeah. I don't think but um what other inconsistencies are you living with mm. that could be uh I don't know I'm trying to think of an example Judge Judge Reb said you have to be level six vegan to date Reb <laughs> I don't know why this is happening <laughs> that's not what I said it's, but again it's your it's your personal preference so you know Anyone that's yeah. going to say you're wrong for not dating, uh, I don't know what to call them, carnists, just like yeah, non vegans. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit like um, saying, like, um, yeah. Well, you it, it's, understand. It, 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 Red's been vegan for a very long time, and your ex, you and your ex husband were vegan for a very long time. And so you've only really sort of copulated with someone that's vegan for the last however many goddamn years yeah, so you're not gonna you want to like suddenly date, date carnists i've date i've always dated yeah uh, sure. non-vegans and i said, um, it in the, I said so it, i'm used to it i said know? that and i said in the chat earlier like uh two vegan men broke my heart last year yeah yeah so i'm not saying that vegan men are perfect either mm. so it, it's just you know where i'm at in my life so I don't judge anyone if a vegan wants to date a non-vegan or the other way around or it's up to everyone individually. Yeah. And who knows, in the future, maybe I will meet a guy and he's not vegan and I fall in love with him. I, I was just making a joke that alliterated, I can't complete with a connoisseur. Don't worry, I don't think it's... <laughs> I, I think he'll come around, so don't worry. Oh. I, I, and also I think that... Um, what was I going to say? I don't know. Uh, about vegans and non-vegans, dating, the whole dating thing. Mm -hmm. Fuck, I've forgotten. Like, I, I'm okay with it, you're not. Everyone's got their own preferences. If you think that you can, if you're really, like, if you really get on with the person yeah. and you're on the same wavelength uh, for everything else, like, no, you agree politically and you agree philosophically on many different things, then veganism will follow anyway. Hmm. Yeah, Do you that's agree, a nice Chris? way of seeing it. Yeah, I think if someone's uh, you know, logically truthful, everything then yeah they, yeah they, they, should, they should just do that's it. the key yeah. they're intellectually honest yeah all, all i was going to say is um you know it's no different to say you don't want to be with a you know with a non-vegan to say that you don't want to be with someone who's racist or something i'm not saying that a vegan non-vegan you know, yeah. racist but i mean it's someone who doesn't align with you ethically you know and, and that's all it is like yeah. and i think that, that's important like if someone conflicts with you ethically then that causes a problem. So you would actively try and avoid those type of people because you don't want that. Like, you know, I think it's just straightforward, isn't it? It's just like, I don't know, people, you know, it's like saying, I'm not going to date someone because they believe in fox hunting or whatever, you know, it's just because you don't, your ethics don't align. So I think that's fine. Yeah, so I think many times your ethics align but they, uh, they're not vegan. That's just the missing part of the puzzle for them because they are on every other way on your wavelength. Do you see what I'm saying? So the veganism part is just just the missing, missing part of the jigsaw puzzle. That's, I mean, I know people that uh, I get on with really well, you know what I mean? And they just need a little bit of a push, but I haven't had the chance to... Yeah have that one-to-one -one of them to have those conversations and it can be quite daunting because if you really like admire the person you don't want them to like not like you by having the vegan the vegan conversation hmm. um so you kind of put it off for a bit you think oh maybe i'll leave it because they might not like me or whatever yeah but i think if you um talk to them on their level uh, also you have to make them interested in veganism you have to make uh, try and sort of entice them to ask questions about yeah. you being vegan and stuff like yeah um actually, not like saying oh friend, by the way a friend of mine has got um, but, um, quite a good tactic she actually actively doesn't talk about veganism if they ask her about it she will actually say um she doesn't want to talk about it because she said that if the more that she does uh, yeah. that it makes them want to know more and then when you actually get around to telling yeah. them you can just say look well are you going to listen or are you just going to 
troll me and they, they take it proper seriously yeah. um yeah she finds this really yeah, offensive. So you them, yeah so you say to them oh i can't really talk about it i'm sorry and they go why 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 not well it's just whenever i have conversations about it with people they get really defensive so you're already put, putting them on the like oh, i'm not going to get defensive don't worry you can tell me kind of yeah, put them uh, mindset behavior. aren't you but, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I, you know, it's just people always get really defensive and then they get upset and angry and stuff. And I don't, I just don't want to cause that to uh, anyone, especially not you. But they're like, oh no. And they'll come back with, oh no, but you know, I'm not, I'm not getting defensive. I'm just interested in it. So yeah. tell me more, you know, mm-hmm. and then you're onto a winner because then you can, yeah. and want- then you can at that point say, look, well, if we're going to have this conversation, you need to be sort of honest about uh, what we're going to be talking about. You know, don't try and, uh, you, you you can you can set the uh, the ground rules for the discussion before we have that discussion. Yeah, cool. well, I think we should probably move on because we're getting more into dating advice now than uh, effective activism. <laughs> <laughs> That's, um, someone said in the chat. <laughs> um, yeah. On, so then. should we? What should yeah. we do? Should we, should we take questions from people? See what, what they want to talk about. Maybe that's a yes, thing please. to do. I'll, I'll big up um, big up OG OG Mizen in the chat. In. Oh yeah, I asked him if he wants to join, but he's busy. At the no, moment, he's, he's, so well, he's in. He's in now. He's here. I asked um, I asked Richard as well because he said um, he'd yeah. join when he's not busy on oh, some cool. of my live streams, but he's super busy making a really epic video at the moment. He said so. Super epic. Yeah, Look out for that. Yeah, so, what, so, what, so, what, what do people want to? Oh, actually, there's a good question here. Doing outreach with a stall in town does this require permission? Or can this just be done? Right. I actually looked up this loads. Mm-hmm. Yep, you can do it without permission yeah. due to the, um, well, it depends where you are. I mean, well, the European Court of Human Rights articles uh, 10 and 11, I believe, which is um, the right of association and expression, basically means that you are, because um, you are a protest stall, basically, you are legally allowed to give, um, you know, uh, um, dis- distribute information which kind of gives you the right to have a stall. One thing we did to kind of um, just keep our local council happy is we actually got public liability insurance because the main thing they were worried about was if the table collapsed and someone got damaged or something. But it, it costs like 60 quid for a year. So if you've got a group, just like, you know, I'll, I'll just pay it to keep them happy or just don't do it until they ask. But yeah, you, you don't need um, any, you shouldn't need any sort of permissions to set up an outreach. Stall. Just go out there and, and do it. Um, they they can't do anything. We we, we ours, when we set ours up in Plymouth. Not anything. Yeah, when when we set ours up in Plymouth, there was a community police officer that kept trying to come over and tell us that we couldn't do it, and we just kept stating, you know, human rights at him, and then he gave yes, us and left us alone. So yeah, but yeah, go, yeah, go out. Everywhere yeah, put um, PCSOs. Because half the time they don't know what they're talking about. Oh. I because it's the workforce. for, so I wasn't a police officer, no, I'm not, sorry. I didn't understand the word of that, you're, you're, you're breaking up there. No, I'm not. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, yeah, they don't, they, like PCSOs, they don't have to learn the ins and outs of the law to become a PCSO. They're, they're just sort of like, um... I don't know how to describe them. What PCSOs? They're just they're just like the the, the foot just, soldiers yeah, of the police. Do you know what I mean? They're like, just just one lower, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. they don't have. Know. Maybe they don't have any. Um, that was many powers. Oh yeah, well, well, one one little tip if you ever come up against yeah um, community sport officers or anything when you have got an outreach stall and if if they try and get you to move or anything like that, just keep asking them under what law all the time and then make them have to yeah, state the law. Methods, if they can't if they can't do that, then you, they, they've got no right to do anything. If they can't. If they can't st- stipulate the, leg- the piece of le- legislation or the law that they're referring to, then they've got no ground. And they can't arrest you anyway. PCSOs can't arrest you. Only a police officer can do that. So they'll, what they'll do is they'll get onto the radio. I've had many people ask me this, like, oh, I'm really scared because there's a PCSO here. I'm like, no, fuck off. Hmm. Get that, that PCSO. What they'll do is they'll call into the control room. It's like, uh I can ask some assistance or something, or, or they'll get some advice from a police officer, and the police officer will, will, will say, "No, they're fa- they're perfectly fine to do what they're doing," but they will always try and bully you first to stop what you're doing before they'll go they'll go onto the onto their radios. They'll always, you know, they'll try and they'll try and get you to stop just by telling you, "Please, can you stop?" 
And it's just like, well, no, unless you can stipulate the, the law or piece of legislation, then I'm going to continue because yeah. I haven't got any power. Just so you know, as well, for like things like Earthlings experience and stuff like that, you are allowed to show slaughterhouse footage on laptop and stuff as well. Like, there, there is no age yeah. limit on those that kind of footage for a start. And yeah, you're absolutely free to it. They, they can't tell you to stop. Mm. Yeah, we've had people try and do that before. Actually, what, I was at, we, we did it at a um, Christmas market in Totnes where there was a hog roast and we were doing it there and the police were there for ages trying to get us to stop. And in the end, they, they just had to give up. And they literally stood next to us uh, for like two hours while everyone came over and thanked us for doing it. It was great. <laughs> um, so yeah, they, they, yeah they've got cool. no authority to do that. So, you know, so everyone crack on, get out, get out. Yeah, if you're going to do stuff like that, then know about how, uh, know how the police operate, have a bit of a, a basic knowledge of what they can and can't do. That really helps. Because mm. yeah. um, you got it, because they, they will try and bully you into not doing it. Um, and you'll, you'll, you know, you'll get really nervous or they'll try and, uh, what's the word? They'll try and gaslight you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, where they try and make you, yeah, they, remember also, they try and make you think that you're insane or somehow stupid or ridiculous for doing it. Mm. Yeah. That, that's a tactic that the police have used quite a lot of times. Also, you remember know. you don't need to um, give them any details that's, that's as well. Us. Sorry. Also, remember that you um, don't you, you, don't have, you don't, you don't have, give them have to give them any details. Arrested, you don't have to give them your name. You don't have to tell them Absolutely anything. Not. Yeah. Don't have to give a police officer your personal details. Yeah. Like what for? Because they'll just they'll they'll tap all that into into their little database. Mm. Like uh, oh intel on uh oh really dangerous vegan activists uh, handing out some pamphlets on like how the meat and dairy industry is. Oh yeah. You know like they'll paint you as some kind of terrorist or something on their database. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? If you and if you give like, don't ever give your police officer your details unless you unless you've been arrested. Then in which case you have to. Mm. But it's not going to get to that stage, yeah. is it? Because and you, you can always you can always ask that as well. No. Just always ask questions. Just, 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 Chris, just, yeah, Chris, shut up for a minute because I've got to go to bed. I've got to go to bed now. Oh, but, but um, uh, Emma, are you are you staying on or is this Rev going to bed? Yeah, 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 doing yeah. All right, thank you for joining everybody. And we're still um, going. It's just Rev's going to bed. Yeah, I'm going to bed. So you can continue the fun without me. We'll do it again sometime. Yeah, right. everyone, everyone, say Love goodbye you, to Rev. Hi. <laughs> right, it's just me and me and banana yeah. left. Um, yeah, what what I was going to say is, um, best thing to do with 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 police when they ask you to do anything is obviously ask them under what law and ask them if you're obliged to do these things. If they say like, "What's your name?" We say, "Well, um, am I yeah, am I obliged to give you my name? Do I have to give you my name?" And they have to be truthful with you, yeah. you know, unless they're yeah. This is a reasonable question to ask. Do I have to give you my name? Yeah, normally they don't normally say no. You don't have to, like but it'll be useful. That, anything that in any authority, any, if anyone's in any authoritative um, role, then you're you're perfectly fine to ask them why they're doing the things that they're doing. Don't just accept it blindly. That's that's crazy. You always got to, you need to ask them like why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Under what authority? Like I don't just uh, just play dumb. Just just fucking play dumb. Just like uh, I don't understand. Like, can you can you please explain this to me? Yeah, you know, get, that's what get it them takes. to read out wanna, the laws. You don't want to come across as like, oh, you don't want to come across as like, oh, I'm being difficult and just play dumb. Yeah, get them to read out the laws because they never know them. <laughs> yeah, always oh, quite fun. Oh yeah, yeah oh, the the law I was um going to say about the um showing the slaughterhouse footage. It's oh god, what is it? It's um oh god, I can't remember what the hell it's called now. It's like 4A of, is it like public, you should know, Sam, is it Public Disorder Act or something? I can't remember what it is. And it basically says about, oh, yeah. it's section four. Oh. Yeah, it's basically, it's basically saying that you're, you, you've got signage that is abusive or threatening. That's the law they try and use against you when you're showing slaughterhouse footage. But yeah, what, but it's not threatening. Exactly, it's and it's not abusive. Is well, it, not, it, it is abusive. You're not threatening but it's, anyone with violence. Yeah. So it's not, it's not section five. Yeah, that, that, that's it. Yeah. So if anyone ever tries to use that against you, you can just bring that up and say, no, it's not offensive. It's not abusive. Because you know, what, what you're showing is legal, you know, according to the law. You know, you're just showing food production. So if somebody gets offended by that, they have a choice to turn away and, go, you know, not, not engage with it. But the, the, what, um, 
why the, there is a Section 5 law in place is that um, to prevent people shouting abuse in the street at other people and which um, which is threatening towards them. Yeah. Like if they're saying, I'm going to fucking kill you or, you know, I'm going to, or threatening violence, like I'm going to hit you or something like that. It's to prevent those kind of things. Yeah, exactly. Um, got, got another question here from uh, Alicia. Uh, it says, uh, what books, videos, resources do you recommend for being effective as an activist? And she was saying, I recommend anything by Melanie Joy, a book called Change of Heart and a books on spreading ideas like make it stick i'd say i was going to bring up melanie joyce she's a really good um uh one on effective activism actually there's this a brilliant channel i'd recommend called vegan canal like k-a-n-a-l yeah. it's basically every single video from the international animal rights conference in luxembourg and there are so so many talks on there about effective activism and stuff like you know how to do best online activism all that kind of stuff just go on there and just just binge watch yeah, that's, that's all my tips anyway. You got anything? Um, it's, I've, I've collected so much over the years. Well, it's been over three years now. Uh, to, my, to my collection of, you know, resources that I pull. Um, the ones I refer to the most. I don't know, what have I... Actually... I'm what... kind of like... Um, I say, what, one thing I've I... kind of amalgamated a few different things. I think, yeah, Dr. Melanie Joy's, you know, the, the carnism, uh, uh, her lectures on that, uh, understanding carnism is really, really important. And um, I don't really study any sort of vegan literature, per se, yeah. because other than, you know, understanding the psychology of carnism and stuff like that, I don't really see why I need to... Uh, read up about anything else because it's just purely it, it can be purely just their uh, logic logic based yeah well this is what I was, the this is what I was just about now, to say because I'm only talking about the ethics I'm not really talking about health or environment anymore because there are other people that are, are doing that and they're making ways you know like the guys that make conspiracy and stuff like that or people like Hench Herbivore he's just you know he's promoting the health I'm just you know purely concentrating on the ethics and it's the because it's we're talking ethics it's purely sort of logic based so I don't really need to read anything other than how logic works yeah well that's what I was going to say I was going to say another uh, good resource is probably your channel like an Ed's channel Joey Carbstrong anyone doing street interviews because you can just learn by just watching other people be in debate and conversation like that's really a great way to learn what's yeah. effective and oh, just just look at yes. real life situations and look at what's what people are reacting to and what they you know what turns them away that's really good and also we might as well bring him up just binge watch ask yourself videos and learn about the whole logic of argumentation because that's really really useful and it, it, it gives you like so many great examples of kind of you know common things that are said to vegans yeah of course everyone hates him now Everyone in my chat hates him because of the live stream we did the other night. Oh, right. <laughs> I know. But so the thing is, though, the thing is, that's a fallacy in itself. Just because you hate someone doesn't mean that you shouldn't um, yeah, take on their like look at their logic and their reasoning and their ideas. Yeah, you know. Um, well, I think he, he to be yeah. fair, he did apologize. Oh, he, he did apologize near it's, the it's, end. It's, he came um, in angry, but he did. Apologize. And why not? Because uh, I mean, like, I, because Vegan Gaines did a uh, Patreon um, live stream the other day, and he was talking about the fact that this uh, new uh, Jordan Peterson lecture has gone up on his channel, and in it he mentions uh, veganism and vegetarians. Right. And he mentions that um, he doesn't really go on, on about it too much, but he says, like, it's, uh, he, uh, I don't want to do his words a disservice because I, I haven't actually watched it fully, but um, he kind of said, his understanding of it is that I don't think it's all vegans and vegetarians. We'll just go with vegans for now. But he says a large part of it is to do with sort of like it can be sort of a, a religious doctrine type of mentality. Um, but he doesn't actually go into, he doesn't try and debunk veganism in any way. He just uh, focuses on that. And I think a lot of people who um, have watched that video or like Jordan Peterson, who are vegan, will be like, oh, I'm never going to, you know, watch another Jordan Peterson lecture ever again because he said that. And it's just like, no, come on. He doesn't, he just doesn't fully understand it yet. And he probably will in time. So 
yeah, give him, yeah. you know, give him a bit of time. Yeah, you know, I think I think you know, in Isaac's defence, I think he was just one. He was never planning on debating actual Justice Warrior whatsoever, and he just did because people were getting the argument kind of, you know, they, well, they weren't kind of representing the argument in the way that he he wanted. So I think he was just a bit frustrated when he came in. But to be fair, he yeah, did apo- yeah, right. he, he did apologise at the end as well and said, you know, and said, like, oh, sorry, I came in a bit angry. So I think he realised that. But yeah, I mean, to be fair, he, even if he was a total dickhead, he's still got valid points, I mean, that are worth listening to. Um, you know, it's a bit like Vegan Games. Yeah, v- like, v- vegan Games has gone, like, yeah. right off on one on many occasions. But, God, you know, his, well, that's what his, his say, nutritional like, information with, with is, 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 is good. People will they will discredit what, whatever he says purely on the fact that he um you know uses uh violent imagery like with his knives and guns and stuff like that in his videos as satire as a form of satire they will reject any of his arguments because of that that one thing absolutely ridiculous i'm responding to in this a video right now which is the video go up in a couple of days time hopefully tomorrow this this girl, she just basically, she just a character assassinates vegan games, um, as if, and it's just like a total roaming millennial kind of mentality, and and as a red herring to uh, not have to engage with the actual ethics of veganism, like with the argumentation for it. Mm. That's the one you're. Just is a, that the one you're just responding a to. Technique. Is that the one you're doing a response mm-hmm. video to? I hear that. Oh, is that the one you're doing a bit. response video to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. When's that one going it's on? It's nearly finished. Um, I was hoping to get it finished by tonight, but it might be tomorrow, possibly. I think it's going to be Thursday night. That's one to look out for then, everyone. Because you get so, I get so into it now, like, with the editing and stuff. I'm like, oh, what, <laughs> let's do a little animation or... No, let's just just voice over that bit a bit because it, it could be a bit stronger. Or let's just do a bit of research into that one field to back up this point a bit more. And it just sort of develops and develops. And yeah, it goes a bit crazy. It's like uh, you've got to come. I've got to stop at some point. But I think the more work you can put into the video, it's going to pay off longer term. Yeah. Because those little finer details and stuff that you put into the video will like people appreciate. But they appreciate those little things. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Are there any other um, questions in the, the chat we can I mean there seems to be there seems to be like a their own you know its own conversation going off in the chat. I think they seem to be talking about calcium at the moment. Because we're not engaging them, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it always just turns into its own um, debate in the in the chat itself. I can't really keep up with it, it's just been a bit hectic. They were talking about calcium. Is it true that mild doesn't help bone I think he means milk? doesn't help bones but i don't know about leaching calcium i think they're talking about vitamin the whole um... factor for the most part yeah i think this is uh I, i've always i've always been unsure of this i, I know I what they're talking, they're talking about they're talking about the whole or head travel, probably the best person to ask on that they're talking about the whole um well basically they're talking about the whole dairy um osteoporosis link doesn't it about and i think it, and that's from the china study i believe isn't it where they um the countries with the highest dairy consumption were also the highest rates of hip fractures and osteoporosis, which is where the... But the thing is, you don't, yeah. when you're getting into conversations with non-vegans about that, you don't need... To, what's the point in going into that? Because all, all you need to say is, but you don't need to drink dairy for calcium, do you? That's yeah. all you need to say. Like, why do you need to go into the... That's the thing. Like, I can't understand why people go into so much work and trouble to to put across that point like that you don't like uh yeah just keep it simple yeah i didn't reply to his how much calcium may or may not get from milk or plants or whatever the fact is you can get calcium from plants so yeah byron's saying i haven't replied to his comment but i don't know what comment that is because there's like a million um you might want to write it again um because there's a hell of a lot of um comments (laughs) Um, yeah, sorry, I'm not, we're never going to keep up with this chat. Yeah, I'll happily answer um, it if you if you want to write it again because um yeah. there just there's loads. I'm I'm trying to go back and see which ones you've you've written, but um yeah, I, I can't seem to find anything. There's so much here, mate. I, I do apologise. Oh yeah, uh, Judge Judge Fraser's a good point. Most people don't give a, a shit about health. 
It's only when you mention vegan that suddenly they care about health. Yeah, true. <laughs> Normally everyone just cracks yeah. on, doesn't even think about like nutrients or anything like that. Oh, here we go. Um, oh, is this one actually? Chris, uh, Chris, can you hold the chat for a minute while I go to Lou? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Right, I'm back soon. Oh, um, right. Byron, I think I can see the comment you made, but I don't think it's complete. It seems to cut off. Is it the one about racism? If it is, can you rewrite it? Because... If you actually look back on the chat, it kind of cuts off halfway through the question. So I can't actually read the whole thing, but um, I'm more than happy to answer if you want to rewrite that. Um, yeah, I, I just want to think what else is going on in the chat. A little thing. We're talking about um, chickens. God, it's all, it's all just gone mental, isn't it? It's all just gone, it always does in the chat. It always goes a bit crazy. Talking about arse vaginas, all that kind of stuff. Um, someone actually asked a question, what kind of activism do you find works the most for you? So um, with me personally, um, I, I have quite good results online um, with Facebook and things, just kind of being quite selective about what I share, writing kind of thought provoking statuses. Just always, you know, always doing it in a kind of way that's not too confrontational, that just gets people thinking, just gets the debate flowing. You know, um, anything that gets people's backs up just ends in a big argument. So it's just good to get that people's brains ticking. Um, outreach stalls are brilliant. We do an outreach stall every single week. Um, you know, just like, like I'm always saying, one-on-one -on -one conversations with people are always super effective. Um, I obviously I do university and college talks as well, which are always really good because you get a chance to sit down with, you know, 20 to 30 students who have to listen to the whole argument before actually commenting which is pretty good um oh there's a few more questions here should vegans in general try and adopt the buddhist jainist method of how their faith was spread i.e showing people the what way does that mean? Oh, Jain what does that mean um no, i know what buddhism is but but jainist is um that's who uh gary francione's jainist um well, i don't know what that is. showing what people is it? the way really oh so basically um you know should vegans in general try to, you know, show people the way by being a good example, I'm guessing, which is yes, like every single oh. vegan should be a good example of a vegan. So all this shouting and screaming of people is not being a good example of a vegan. You if, you, if, you're, if, you're, like, if you're more uh, philosophical and thought provoking and people are like, and people think, oh God, right, he's, you know, he's intelligent or whatever and he's got making my brain work and thinking about things, but yet he seems really happy and healthy and enjoying life and stuff and eating great food then yeah that's a great thing because people yeah. are like well I, I want a bit of that yeah but the thing is that you can't expect like you don't want to live a lie though if you're not unhappy do you know what i mean because the thing is if uh you can do that you can act as, like you can live the example and stuff like that but you, you have to have a good mindset and a healthy kind of uh outlook on life in general to be able to for be able to that to be um uh to be perceived as okay this person is legit do you know do you see what i'm saying because yeah, yeah. if you just live if you're just trying to live a lie and trying to post pictures of um your food like perfect food on instagram all the time or putting youtube videos out oh i'm, look, I'm having a great life as a vegan kind of thing and that's not the case no i don't think you should be dishonest with it. Just, just, it just be the best you to be a good you got you got to have like a good um outlook on life to begin with and you know like your life not to be shit <laughs> yeah oh, no, I, just, I, just, I just got to clear something up because i'm being called out for using a bad analogy earlier so i better clear that one up uh basically it's what, uh, what oh. i said um i said dating a vegan was like dating a racist um basically the, the, okay the, re oh. the, 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 well, the reason i say that is dating a vegan Dating a racist. Yeah, I'm I mean, sorry. The, the, re the reason I said that is, is dating a vegan. It's like I'm dating a racist. No, well, no, I, I said it in the, basically in the context of both people have got different, be you know, beliefs and ethical stances on things. That, that's what I was trying to get at. So, a vegan, for example, is obviously you know against the death of animals. You know, it doesn't support it. Where the other side, even though obviously it's you know not purposeful, you know generally you know they they're on the other side that's kind of what i was getting at you know like you wouldn't date someone who doesn't have the same 
beliefs and ethics as you I think maybe it was a bad analogy if it was oh i see like, like you see what i mean if you're like, racist, that's, that's what i was trying to get across like racist, is that what you're saying yeah maybe i just said it in a terrible way i don't know <laughs> if, if, you, if you are racist would you be more inclined to date a racist or would you date a non-racist person um if you're um, yeah i mean i'm just it, trying to think from a racist perspective <laughs> yeah, no, what no, would no. happen that, that's what i'm trying to say like if, if you if you were a racist say and there was someone who was a white supremacist say um <laughs> you know whatever yeah. then um you know that you would have you know it just yeah you know, i mean that would be a better match than if your ethics didn't lie <laughs> no, I'm, getting, I don't know, I'm getting really mixed up here <laughs> You know what I'm saying. Basically, all I'm saying is different ethical, people got different ethical, you know, standpoints can sometimes conflict. Yeah. So I can understand why people wouldn't want to date someone who doesn't have the same ethics with them. That's the basic. Maybe it was a shit analogy. If it was, yeah, I apologise. That's, 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 yeah, no, that anyway. it's, no, it's me like people don't actually listen to the logical structure of the thing. They just pick up on the words. Racist. Oh my God, that's bad. Racist equals bad. Therefore, the analogy is bad. And that's like, no, 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 no. Like, you've got to, like taking the logical structure yeah, of the yeah. sentence and then, and then apply any could be any anything you, you plug it into that structure yeah uh, so, so i'm, I'm hoping people understood it. that i've just been sent some random um things 10 47 10 48 10 49 i don't know what that means um, i can't keep up with my chat i'm trying uh, owen right, says, i'm gonna um, get one of the comments i need to answer owen's question does the promotion of the set Owen's got a good question. Uh, does the promotion of vasectomies in the yeah. vegan circle uh, count as effective activism? Oh. <laughs> um, like during riding? Yeah. Uh, no. Um, it's just silly. No. Um, yeah. I'm just going to go outright no to that question. Yeah. Next. Yeah, just, just, just <laughs> no. He did write lol after it, so I think he's that. Yeah. Why do I even need to explain how that's bad activism? Do I need to go into that? What was that? Sorry, I missed that bit. I'm in the chat. Oh, um, huh? uh, Owen's put something, a uh, quite good question. Okay. Um, oh, moving on then. Yeah. I wanted to answer that question, but... Oh, what was it? What was the question you wanted what to answer? What was Owen said? What was the question you... Oh, oh said... don't worry. What is what, what, what was Owen said? Oh, he, said he said, how much effort should we put in trying to redeem our reputations as aggressive and rude, in your opinion? Personally, oh. I, think, I think we should oh. really try and get rid of that reputation to, because I think people are more receptive... Like, okay, great example, Owen, okay, is you in the debates that you've done recently, you've been super respectful all, all the time. Like, you know, you've, you've talked to people like human beings and because of that, they have been respectful back to you even if their, you know, ethics are not the same as yours. They still respect the yeah. fact that you've been respectful for, to them. And I think by doing that, we can get into better debate with people and they're more likely to see your point of view. I think just being respectful both ways, especially with veganism, because as I said... You can be, you can be respectful and uh, be very polite with them. Yeah, because I, cause I said, Be very patient with them. But the thing is, if they get stuck on the same bloody point and they're not conceding, where it's just ridiculous, it's just common sense, they, you, this is what Isaac does, and, I, and people get really annoyed with him for doing it. They, he fixates on that one point and he won't let you move on until you've come to a conclusion that on that point he won't let you go on until you've done that and people get really annoyed like he starts getting rude but the thing is like the, the guy has got quite a lot of patience with people up to a certain extent until until it's just clear that they're just being stupid so you have to sort of highlight that that you know you we're not going to move on until you until you um you've, you've jumped this hurdle because it's clearly a hurdle for you um yeah. that you can't get over because you're just not thinking it through properly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think uh, By Byron's now saying that um, you're, you're misrepresenting him as misunderstanding me. Uh, it's both of you that are well, missing I, the point. I, well, I, I, Byron, I've, I've, I've already said that if it was a crap analogy, that I'm, I apologise. So, like, you know, I, I, I explained what I meant. You know, it's difficult on a live stream. We're, you know, we're put under pressure. We just say stuff and sometimes it comes out crap. And that was probably one of those moments. So, oh, what the racist! Thing. Yeah, yeah. I think people know what I'm trying to say. I'm not, you know, I'm not. Yeah, you know, we've gone through it though, anyway. So we've cleared that one up. Yeah, we we we've cleared that. One up. <laughs> it's all good. I think we have. Yeah. Um, what other questions have we got here? Um, I did another. 
minutes. I, I, can I read some of mine? Because you're reading all yours, but it's my turn. I'm, yeah, I'm actually well, I'm reading them all off, off of your chat, so... Oh, OK. I put you on your chat. No, no, I'm reading them off of mine. OK, then... Oh, I've got a, um, oh, I've got give a, a shout out here to um, Aaron Sisson for Super Chat. Um, OG Mizzen plus that oh. guy T debate equals effective activism slash debate. Exactly. That's exactly what we're saying. Owen, you did a damn good job, mate. Really, really good job. And thank you, Aaron. Wait, is that in your chat? That's is on that mine, yeah. Is that your uh, stream or mine? Yeah, th oh, right, th yeah thank yeah. you so yeah. much so for the Super Chat, Aaron. That's really appreciated. Chris, we need to stop talking over each other. I have to, I have to thank keep people for the Super Chat thing. Uh, let's just do one person at a time because it's frustrating. Okay, right, you go, you go. Right, I'll read a question. Uh, let's pick one out. There's a, a lot of Owen talking in the chat. Okay, let's just do the last. Let's just do the last comment. Let's see what it's going to be random. Oh, it's to OG Mizzen. Someone's replying to him. I don't think he's been criticised too much. Who is he talking about? Oh, this is why you have to read all the fucking chat. I just can't keep up with it. Uh, I don't think he's been criticised too much. I don't know who's talking, who's referring to the, uh Just don't call someone a retard. Oh, he's talking about Isaac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the issue? Um, so I think he's referring to possibly when he called Dan a retard on my live stream or something like that because he was rude to him. I think that's what they're chatting about. Okay. Did you did you see that live stream, Chris? You yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah, I felt I felt quite sorry for yeah. Dan. He got a bit destroyed. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah. Again, again, that's like um, I don't know. Like, I I can see why Isaac was getting kind of wound up because it seems to be going around in circles a little bit. Um, but oh. yeah, I mean, it's always good to try. And, it's like, it's always trying to keep to keep it's like, cool, even if it's like going around in circles. What's that? Sorry. Oh, yeah, I, I said it was like hearing a conversation between a non-vegan and a carnist, a, a vegan and a non-carnist, where the carnist just keeps going round in circles, and it was like listening to like one of those conversations. Yeah, it, it was. Yeah, it was just a bit crazy, but it was interesting though. So, and uh, I, I'm still uh, no closer to fully understanding intersectionality. <laughs> it confuses the hell out of me. I definitely don't oh, want to get onto that subject there. right now because you don't want to open that it melts my brain. Worms tonight. Like, just, just go to that live stream and check out all the fucking cancerous comments. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, but um, right, there's there's so there. many on there. Someone called some, re uh, some retard in my chat wanted me to read one of his. Um, hold on. Uh, is the displeasure with nihilism present amongst the majority of vegans? The displeasure with nihilism. Yeah, is the displeasure with nihilism, is the present, of nihilism. Among, present among the majority of vegans or something? It, so the way that that question is phrased is like, are they saying that there uh, that there is a legitimate uh, that nihilism is a legitimate thing? Um, I'm not. I'm not entirely sure. It sounds like you know. They are. That's kind of fucked up. Yeah. Huh? Uh, can you? Yeah. Can you kind of rephrase that for us? Because. Yeah, I don't really, don't not really understand what you're asking there. Because obviously, you don't have to be vegan to realise that nihilism is fucking stupid. Yeah. And you, you're always going to get <laughs> consistency anyway, because if somebody says they're a nihilist or you know, like they're a pacifist or something, um, or no, sorry, a nihilist is somebody who care about themselves, they don't care about anyone else, animals, plants, whatever, they just, they just don't care. Yeah. They've got to that point where they just don't care, about, give a fuck about anything. Then when you start saying, okay, so you wouldn't care if you died tomorrow, and they'd be like, yeah, I wouldn't care if I died tomorrow. What about your mum then? Yeah, well, you know, what about well, your sister? I mean, I mean if you're And then you quite... find out actually, they're not actually true nihilists because they're not being consistent. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, to, well, to answer the question as it's phrased there, is the displeasure with nihilism present amongst the majority of vegans? I'd probably say, yeah, most vegans don't like nihilism because it's a stupid position because you just mean you hate everything i, I, I think if you, if you ask me about when you're talking to non-vegans and they become not and they pretend they're nihilists is that what he's talking Hold about on, i'll see if he's written anything but, um no he hasn't written anything back since then so i, I can't i can't really tell i don't, I don't really, can't really answer the question then because you don't really understand it yeah mm. I don't know. Um, no, I don't know. Oh, yeah, it's some, it's, um, Alicia's got a question. 
Uh, what do you think about loud oh, voices who choose um, Oh, can you read that one? What do you think about loud voices? I think it says, what do you, what do you think about loud voices who choose not to, uh, who choose to disassociate from the responsibility of an activist, but who is representing veganism regardless? I guess maybe that's um, referring to I didn't really hear Isaac. The part. So basically, what, what do you I think, really what do you think about that. people who are loud voices for veganism, but disassociate the res from be, you know, being responsible as an activist? But who obviously represent veganism? What people that? What are you talking about? People that are just um, spokespe spokespeople for veganism, but not actually practice veganism themselves. No, no, no. So, for, so for example, like Isaac. Just... I'm, I'm guessing. I'm guessing it's based around because that seems what to be the conversation in the chat. Um, you know, in, oh, the, in, the, way that, yeah, okay. in the way that he's not an activist. So Isaac isn't really a vegan. Activist. But he no, represents no, no, veganism. Not. So, what is the thoughts on that? Get what I mean? Well, he's doing a good job of turning people vegan. Yeah. And it's like he's trying to convince like the whole skeptic, trying to take on these big names in the YouTube community, like the, from the uh, skeptic community. If the thing is, like, if you can have conversations with those types of people um, and try and round them, then think all their fucking followers and subs, or whatever, they're going to have to think about it as well. So he, if he, so. There's a place for the Isaacs of this world. Like, yes, they they are rude and they are, you know, they're just not very nice people to deal with. That's a matter of opinion. I don't know. Like, if you if you if you get easily offended, then it's probably not for you. Yeah. Myself personally, I don't really get easily offended. I just, I, I mean, think. What, I mean, I guess I can see a chick. I you... think what for Isaac, for people retards, I think it's funny, but some people will just. You know, point me out for being a bad person. I don't. Yeah. Know. I, I don't give a shit. Because she's asking if they have but, the same responsibilities. Yeah, there's a purpose for those types of people on YouTube because they, they will. Um, he's got a certain amount of intelligence. He can think. He's thought about name the trait for so fucking long. He's like, all the different um, possibilities, all the different inconsistencies that people could possibly bring up with name the trait and all that kind of stuff. Like, he's really well thought. You know, it's not. It hasn't taken. It hasn't just. He hasn't just like you know smoked a joint and thought, oh, I know, name the trait, and then the next day come up, you know, made a YouTube video about it. He's taken some time over, I think. Yeah, I think her argument is kind of you know, do they have the same responsibilities of representing veganism, whether they're an activist or not? Should they still be aware of um, their actions? No, you've got, you don't have any. You're not obliged. You, there's no rule book or guidebook to say this is how you should act as a as a uh, a vegan who's well, in the public well, domain. No, there's not, but from what we've discussed, there are things that are more effective and less effective and should should they still adhere to, you know, the fact that they might not be classing themselves as an activist, but they should also accept the responsibility of not putting well, people off. Do you know, it do, depends you know, all, who your audience is. I'm just trying to play devil's advocate here. Yeah, no, it depends who your audience is because... Somebody that takes a softly, softly approach says, oh, it, oh, of course, there is a um, place for that on YouTube or in real life, whatever. Like, um, of me doing my street interviews, I'm quite uh, soft there, but I am, I can be quite firm as well. Um, but if you're, if it's to do with online, like uh, online debates or um, where the two people, They've had time to research and come to it and do the. Then they know what they're going to say and stuff like that. Um, then I think that's different. You can be a bit more ruthless if you want to in that in that kind of um, area. Yeah. <laughs> Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I know what you mean. It's a really difficult one because you know, like. Just do it and you just and with Isaac, he's just doing. Like he doesn't care if people like him or not. He's still going to make his fucking response videos and stuff because, like it or not, he is actually helping. Uh, the yeah, he is actually helping vegans to formulate arguments properly. Yeah, and to come up with like uh, strong, re um, sound reasoning and stuff like this. Um, and I think he's uh, the the roaming millennial um, debate that they had with him and vegan gains like if you look at her twitter and stuff like that or like 
Isaac, what was it? Yeah, yeah, I think he said that a lot of the um, roaming, roaming millennials fans have actually come over to him and said, actually, yeah, she's, she's just an idiot. Like, she's just not getting it at all. Like, you are clearly right. I'm going to consider going vegan now. That's really good. Yeah. So they've come over from her channel. Just, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's obviously working. No, no. I mean, I wouldn't never, I'd never argue that it isn't working. I guess, you know, it's, it's kind of like the same as, you know, like, you, you could move the same argument over to vegan games, for example. Like, if he's, like, pulling out knives and stuff like that, is it, you know, is it giving veganism a... A bad. I mean, I I love both of these guys. So I mean, I'm just trying to play devil's advocate, and just to kind of you know just to discuss it. Um, but whether you know whether they would be even yes. whether they'd be even more effective if they didn't do certain things but still carried on doing what they're doing. If you know what I mean. If they were like, if if to say, for example, if Vegan Gains was never angry, but really, I guess that's given him the publicity though, isn't it? Which is why he's so effective now but like if he was like super just factual and just going to be like this 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 is blah 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 blah, whether people might watch his content and not have that opportunity to hate him if they don't like him they'll just be like shit he's got those really good facts whether yeah. he'd be more effective well the thing is though if you're going to say uh i'm not going to go vegan because i hate this person yeah, that I mean, just no, demonstrates no, shit excuse. Yeah. <laughs> your shit person yourself yeah. But yeah, I understand what you're saying. Like, I don't know. I think you should just be yourself. Like, yeah, but then, but then, like I was saying, but, but then, but I then, feel but like then, I'm a big sister. I want to be the big sister to people. I'm not. I'm I know, not, but then, I'm what, not bullied. I'm saying is, making, by, by or saying like that, the mother, the mother, thing, you know, like, stop being an idiot. Like, you're being a, you're, you're being a silly boy. You know, like. I know, but all, 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 I'm, not, all I'm saying with stupid this. Stupid idea to meet anyone who loves them. All I'm saying yeah. with this is if, is if we're going to be if we're going to be logical, which we have to be if we're talking about Isaac, is um, wouldn't it by that logic everyone be themselves mean that all the people that we were saying don't shout at people online earlier, they should be shouting at people because that's what they do and that's themselves. But we don't agree that that's effective. You know what I mean? Because people, people Could, you, you, you were saying that everyone should be themselves. Online. Everyone should be themselves in like the videos oh. or whatever. You know, and do what they do. Um, but they love him, and they've gone vegan because casters more the uh, kind of casting a spell and being more clever kind of thing. Like, so yeah, I, I, I get the um, the comparison. Uh, yeah, I get that. Yeah, I get that now. That's totally yeah, the yeah, case. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, Rich is just going around as like just leaving a trail of destruction everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Isaac's picking up the pieces. <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing, isn't it? Because Maybe. if you use those analogies, yeah, like, like Isaac's got the pieces everywhere at the moment in the various people's live streams and yeah. debates and things. Well, if we use that analogy, though, <laughs> yeah, the, the berserker is always very effective in battle because he'll go in and just mess things up. Yeah, he's completely violent and doesn't hold back, you know. And maybe you think, oh, maybe you shouldn't have um, ripped the guy's head off and then shat in it or something because that's a little bit but, too much. But he's getting the job I done. Must... So. <laughs> I might just point out actually that it's not. I'm not talking about um, vegan games leaving a trail, a trail of destruction in online debates because he's very methodical and fine in debates. Yeah, it's just his, like it's just his videos, yeah, where right. he uses the gets the knives out and the guns and stuff. The trailer that's where the trail of destruction lies. It lies there uh, within. Yeah, definitely. No, there, I mean, uh, fair enough. In, in debates, then yeah, I mean he's just logical. And obviously, yeah, he gets worked up, but then I mean. Yeah, people get worked up, you know, especially if people are not answering questions and God knows what, get annoyed. I can't blame him for getting annoyed. Yeah. yeah. People just need to give each other's, uh, other the benefit of the doubt a bit more, I think. Yeah. That's uh, Owen saying that. I don't know what, if it's referring to another comment he made or, or not. We'll just accept it. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, you need to give people the benefit to, of the doubt to a certain degree, but then you can't just go on and on like that if they're not conceding like a basic logic they're not gonna if they're not gonna like because you can't progress any kind of conversation until they've until you get on the same page. you gotta get basically in any kind of discussion or debate or conversation you have to get onto the same page as each other otherwise it's not going to progress yeah there's no point in uh, discussing something else or moving on and saying this okay um 
let's just agree to disagree because what's the point? You need to like get on the same page as them first and then move on from there. You can't, there's, there's, you need to have a foundation to work from. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, Bohan was saying, um, yeah, he uses, Vegan Games uses most of the props for, for analogies, which is true. But people, some people don't get it. Like when he's talking about stuff yeah, it's people, stuff like that, you know, it's, 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 all, it's all part of a joke. Context that is satire. Yeah. They, they aren't actually properly watching his videos all the way through. They're just, you know, they'll just cut to that one scene where he's like threatening to stab you or whatever. I'm totally taking it out of context. Yeah. So some people don't, he's just got a bit of dark humour as well. Like with that whole um, thing with the stomping the baby. <laughs> thing ages ago i mean yeah. personally i found that pretty funny because i've just got a bit of a dark thick sense of humor sometimes and yeah, i knew, too, and I knew like, he was uh, clearly joking I've never had a problem like, with it. he clearly wasn't being serious it was pretty obvious but obviously some people don't see it i've never ever had a problem with vegan games i think oh like some people get so offended but i i know i know that i am not like everyone maybe i'm not like everyone else but i don't get easily offended and people accuse me of like, well, you know, you're, you're, you're UBWP, like you're different. Like you can, you can withstand anything, whatever. And I'm more sensitive. Mm. Uh, it just, I don't know. It annoys me how people, I, maybe I'm being insensitive to insensitive people. That's what I'm saying. But I've never had a problem with vegan games and I don't think anyone else should either. Oh, someone, someone just said, um, did, did you have a problem with him, him filming his granddad's heart attack? Mm. A bit uncouth, wasn't it? I suppose. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we we could probably make an argument for that one. I think um, that yeah, I mean, I I could see what he was trying to do, but yeah, it was never going to go down, was it? So um, yeah, good question, good question. <laughs> but um, uh, oh, I, I was going to bring up a point on that. I can't remember what it was. Another analogy to do with. Yeah, what he did with the uh, filming his grandfather yeah. reminded me of something else, but it's just totally gone out of my head again. Oh, Owen was saying we should have a vegan super stream. Why, why don't we get Owen on the chat? Why don't we get him in? Well, I'm just busy, I think. So. I don't know. Owen, if, you, if, if you're not busy. Can if you want something. Yeah, if you're not busy, you can come on if you want. We'll send you a link. Have a chat. Oh, what about uh, the fact he lied uh, about adopting his dog? Oh, no, it's just, yeah, he wants it to be on his live stream on Friday. That's what he's talking about. Friday or Saturday, he normally does them. Oh, okay. If he wants to join, then he can. But um, um someone's saying, can, um, can you discuss whether Are we name, going to... someone? Yeah, you know, someone saying, can you discuss whether name the trait is it effective? Since the whole point is to show some rights should be extended to animals, but most people already think animals have some rights. Actually, there's some bits missing from that. Yes. What you trying to say? No, um, but it's the the point of name the trait is to um, get people to empathise where they wouldn't normally, i.e. because they eat meat and they love animals at the same time. It's just to illustrate that um, you should have empathy for those animals that you eat as well. Yeah. It's just, it's just a simple tool of just getting people to show their inconsistencies and get them to think about... Like, I, I think it's just a really powerful way just to get people to think about, you know, the difference between us and animals. I think that's, like, one of the strongest parts of it, I think. Just getting people just to... Just yeah. to think about that alone, to think, you know, that we're, we're not really that dissimilar and, you know, why do we treat them that way? I think that's, you know, that's what makes it great just on its own, I think. Even, yeah, to, even if you don't get past that it's stage. Like, it's one of many tools you can use to uh, engage with a conversation with non-vegans. You don't have to use it. In many contexts, you don't need to use name a trait yeah. to get to the point. Like, all you have to do is say, do you think it's um, okay? Do you think it's ethical to, to, uh, kill animals for food or we don't need to and you know they and they go no i don't think it is yeah. or you know you get them on the same page like it, it could be very simple you don't have to name a trait but it is very handy to have that as a uh a fallback yeah when they start to yeah. say that you know we are more intelligent and all that kind of stuff so therefore it's okay it doesn't it, that's you know it's a way to get them to see that that's an irrelevant point yeah, the theistic vegan saying uh, or civilization or the theistic vegan was the... saying he thinks the main problem is most people don't seem to understand the argument, which I would agree with, because the amount of times I've had to 
explain it to people. You kind of say it and they're like, what are you on about? And you have to really, really dumb it down for people. I've drawed, you have to draw, draw a map out for them. Yeah. Um, on my video that's coming out, I've actually done it in a way that I think it's more easily to, easy to understand using two examples that I'm going to show on the screen. So, uh, yeah. Basically, yeah. everyone who watched my video, that's going to come out in a couple of days. <laughs> um, someone, someone wrote, um, this, this is a question for you, Emma. Um, uh, what if Neville O'Reilly had a heart attack? Would you film it? Oh. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone doesn't yeah. know, Neville is like a kind of grade A troll. I'm going to say grade A, grade F troll. That loves posting just, on videos. Just, many you just copy and paste things. He's got these like okay. lists of certain things. He just keeps pasting them. It's brilliant. Talking about climate change in the video about. Yeah. Some of them um, have got like songs in as well, isn't they? Uh, Think about giving your love to just one man or something. Well, I, don't, I never really read them to be honest. I just ignore. Yeah, it's annoying because he, he agreed to debate me at one point and then he um, never sent me an email to confirm it. There's no point in saying. No, there's I no point in debating him. You just go on, a, on random tangents and want to talk about climate change. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be great though, it'd be fun though. I'd enjoy no, it. It'd be fun. It's fun as fuck. I wouldn't, I'd be like, see you later, guys. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> there would just be no point to it. There's everyone's no point to making just, trolls, is there? Yeah, everyone's still discussing vegan games and about whether we lied about adopting the dog. I don't know what went on there, but they definitely tripped up their story somehow. But either way, they've got a dog, they've got to feed it. If it can't eat vegan, they've got to give it meat. It's the, can't let the dog die. Um, it's a shit situation they can't get out of. So, I don't know. Old, old news. Yeah. Oh, yeah. OG Mizzles just pointed out that if VG had, had have filmed his grandfather, tell me you wouldn't have watched it. Haha. <laughs> I totally still would have watched it. <laughs> Because I'm kind of, you know, morbid um, curiosity. Morbid curiosity, yeah, to see what's going on. Yeah, I'd still watch it. <laughs> I'd still watch it. It's still, that video would have got quite a ton of views. Uh, yeah, has anyone got any other kind of questions they want to... Anything they want to discuss at all? Everyone's just talking about Vegan Gaines' dog at the moment. I don't really want to have a big conversation about that. Not really much to say. Although I would, I would like to meet the dog because it looks quite cute. I'll say that. It looks like a really cute dog. I would definitely give it a pat. Um, oh, oh, here's a good one. I'm, I'm, I'll be good at this one. Should vegans have yeah, pets? If you want to talk about pets, I can talk to you about pets. I thought this was about um, vegan activism. Someone has asked. It's strange. Should vegans have pets? Oh, yeah. Well, no, 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 no doubt to answer it. If you, if you don't think it's... I can answer something else. Uh, yeah, how about this? Not, not Your Milk podcast. Do you want to get me on the podcast and I'll talk about pets? I'm actually making a documentary about pets. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you if you want me to, if you want to talk about pets, I'll happily come on and and I, I'll talk about I pets. I think that'd for be hours. a really good podcast actually to do with you and him. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let me know if you're interested. You're... In, I'll, I'll be really. I, I'm always interested to talk about the pet thing. I, I do um, talks on it and stuff. Uh, here we go. Are family events places for activism in your experience? That's a good question. I would say that family are yeah. probably the hardest people to get vegan in majority of cases unless you have very like i had a massive row with my family yeah. at christmas yeah yeah had i had, that a, vegan I had a date with my dad the other day they and... to go there. i was just like sat there right i've got my bottle of wine i'm gonna i'm locked in now let's go debate me you know i was just totally in that mindset and i don't know yeah <laughs> i i, I was probably the wrong wrong way to go about it because you know it's christmas it was overly emotional bottle of wine there you know and you're getting angry because people are asking you oh, why are you vegan why are you eating turkey oh yeah they, my family drive me to drink sometimes i don't drink a lot it's only when i'm with my family which isn't that often apart from my sister she's vegan now she's uh was vegetarian turned vegan for the last couple of months she's doing well and i'm um, really proud of her Good then. So, yeah, I find it. It's, yeah. I just find it's really difficult because you got to think from um, in a lot of parents' point of view. They, they've always been um, telling you what to do your entire life, and now suddenly you're telling them that what they told you is wrong. And sometimes they can, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a bit kind of like. But uh, you know, 
I, they never win with arguments against me but to do with veganism yeah. obviously I, w- I would just but, say um, I would just say with family just like that kind of being a good example of a vegan thing I think that's actually quite a good thing to do with family like always give them like really good vegan food that kind of stuff sway them in with stuff like that rather than trying to get into debates because family debates are always my so it doesn't matter how much nice vegan food you give to them they're still not convinced yeah. <laughs> like my mum and my dad they just uh you, you try and reason with them you try and rash- rationalize but they just can see yeah I, i'm simply a selfish person i'm going to continue with it yeah. there's nothing else you can do at that point they, they just admit that they're selfish but they're going to continue yeah. it's like well it's a difficult one fuck you then yeah <laughs> what, what am i supposed to do like just definitely don't spend all your time trying to convert family because yeah. they, they are just generally the the most difficult so yeah concentrate on the low-hanging fruit <laughs> Way to... Yeah, Owens, I said it. Don't try and turn your family, get someone else to do it. Yeah. They're more they're actually more likely to listen to someone else rather than their own son or daughter. <laughs> yeah. Which is crazy. But um but yeah, it's uh, it can be different. Parents are weird, aren't they? I you love them and you hate them. Oh, it just craze me. Like I, I don't I don't hate my mum. I like I like my mum. No, I don't hate my parents, <laughs> obviously, but they do craze me because they don't understand oh yeah it can be frustrating oh, just like people common yeah. sense sometimes and yeah. it's just so hard to get through to them and i'm like yeah i i i came from like my mother's body like i'm basically share the same genes with this person i i, I, I don't understand like how can we disagree on so many things <laughs> <laughs> i know but i think oh. i think after a while like i think I don't know. People can run out. I think you're getting things about it. I think yeah. The the best thing to do is just don't push. Don't like. Don't really d- debate with them. Just be vegan, and then they will see oh, your stuff it's... on your Facebook wall or whatever. And and if they want to chat with you, just be quite strict about it. Just be like, well, do you actually want to know, or are you just gonna yes, give me crap? That's absolutely right. Just yeah. gonna lay the law down a it's little like bit. Like if they want to talk about it, if they want to talk to you about it, like my mum does this all too often. She'll go. Oh yeah, I, I I was watching something on daytime TV about veganism, and they said this, that, and the other. I'm like, Mum, okay, Mum, just stop a minute. If you want to have a, uh, if you really want to have a conversation about veganism, you're gonna have to, um, you're gonna have to sit there and listen to to the reasoning behind it, and the, you're gonna have to accept the ethical argumentation for veganism, and I'm gonna have to go through it with you, and you're gonna have to listen, and we're gonna to have to get on the same fucking page as one another, otherwise we're not gonna have this conversation right now. <laughs> so don't talk to me about fucking what you see in daytime TV or read in the newspaper, unless, you know, unless we're gonna to have to sit down and have this conversation right now. That's the way I handle my mum now, and she's like, oh, okay, we're not gonna have it then. Brutal. <laughs> she just sort of like retaliates, she just sort of like shies away from it now. <laughs> Because she knows she can't win. That was the most brutal, the most brutal treatment of your mother. There, I am brutal with her. Yeah, (laughs) she needs needs, needs it. She really does. (laughs) Yeah. Hashtag savage. (laughs) Yeah. Comes out. Just destroy. You know, in a loving way. Your own mum was just trying to help you. Needs to be. Yeah. Just obliterated her. I have to be a mother to my mother. <laughs> <laughs> you know, tables are turned now. Poor mother banana. As as you get older, you retreat into juvenile again. And as I'm approaching thirty five now, so I'm getting I'm reaching the pinnacle, the peak of my of my uh, I don't know things. Reaching the peak of my of my I don't know what you I don't know what I'm trying to describe. What am I describing here? Okay, let's move on. Yeah. Quick, a port. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. What, what, what does everyone else want to know about? Obviously, it looks like I'm going to be talking about pets on uh, Owen's stream at some point. And, or, yeah, let's save it for Owen's live so, stream. And yeah, let's, I'm always happy why to talk wrap, about it. Why don't we wrap it up and talk, about, uh, talk a bit about the taking note? Oh, yeah, we could do. Yeah, just, yeah to take a break from effective <laughs> activism. Just to, I don't know, I feel like I'm just make, doing an advert. But I don't know if anyone's seen. I've kind of plastered it in like every single group in existence today but um since last may i've been i've been making a documentary actually this, this goes into effective activism because this is this is my my personal activism attempt basically um i'm basically uh, i run a music magazine if none of you 
know, if you don't know me that well, I've done that for like the last six years or online. And so I, I kind of decided to kind of combine my passion for music, my passion for veganism, and I'm actually making yeah. a documentary about veganism's impact in music. And I've been interviewing like big, you know, kind of celebrity you know, vegan musicians like, you know, Andy from Fallout Boy, the Veronicas, Gabrielle Applin, Anti Flag, nice. Ralph Ritchie, um, got loads of other people. Yeah, I've done about, what, 25 interviews so far, um, which has been good. I'm going to America in July and August to go on the walk tour with Toronto Pig Save um, to do some more stuff there. Hopefully interview some bigger people there. I'm going to keep them quiet in case they don't happen. That they should do otherwise i'll cry yeah and um yeah i've basically got a crowdfunder up which I'll, I'll post in the um the chat so if anyone wants to to help me out um and even even if you can't donate yeah. even if you can just share it Amazing or whatever project. that'll be awesome because like basically we're trying to raise uh fifteen thousand so we can actually get it like properly edited get a, a, another cameraman because we've only got one cameraman at the moment we could really do with a a second person yeah. and a graphic design. designer and a stand person yeah, just but... to make it like that perfect that gives it that extra professional touch so that it can reach a wider audience you know yeah because ba basically more... my thought is like you know but, but the, the whole reason i went vegan is because i watched um a video on a goldfinger album called meet your meat and um <laughs> that i i went vegetarian straight away from watching that and then obviously eventually become vegan and so I was like, well, if music influenced me in that way, then maybe people hearing about veganism from musicians that people look up to, because let's be fair, people listen, you know, look up to musicians and listen to what they've got to say way more than they ever will like me. Um, then hopefully they will influence people. And, and just to show how effective it already is, uh, our cameraman um, that I took to Slam Dunk Festival, uh, he was listening to Jenna from Tonight Alive, Inge from Against Me, Rumblebee and Billy from Milk Teeth, and he's actually now gone vegetarian <laughs> just from sitting in on those interviews. So that's pretty damn cool already. And, he's, and the good thing is he he's actually doing it as a start to veganism as well. He's not just going vegetarian and planning on just sticking with that. He's actually you know been really inspired to look into it, which is amazing. So yeah, so I'm just really hoping that kind of works on a bigger scale, which is really cool. so. Um, oh yeah, I will link you to the um the thing anyway i don't want to talk about it for ages i'm going to do another stream about this but um yeah i think i just want to talk because I, I, all i want to bring up about it is that obviously it's a fucking amazing project project uh film and it's going to the reach is just going to be incredible i think um in terms of you know because it's combining music with veganism you're yeah. going to have a lot of uh fans of those people and bands and groups and various artists and stuff come to you know come to that documentary because of their love for that person exactly you know, for, for like, that band or it's like, they I, love that I, i'm music. making this documentary so can... i'm not i'm not making this documentary for vegans like it's not for, you know it's not for us like i mean you know we'd all enjoy it because it'd be cool but um you know I, i'm aiming it at music at music fans that's what i'm aiming it at and yeah. obviously within that they will then learn about the ethics the environment and the health yeah, aspects of yeah. veganism. and how it's so strong is because it's your kind of story because this is how you came to veganism so you're making a documentary about uh the same kind of thing you know uh, yeah. you're trying to get people to follow your story basically because you came to it through, through music and other people can come through to it through music as well yeah exactly that's what I'm, that's what i'm hoping so um you yeah. know well, we'll see what happens, really. Oh, yeah. Um, Milkshed just wrote Goldfinger Free Me video, maybe go vegetarian. That is the same video. It's the same video on the um, the album. Yeah. It's called Meet Your Meat. But yeah, the the song is Free Me um, on there. Yeah, everyone should go and watch it. It's on my channel if you want to watch the video that, that turned me. It, it's on my channel if you want to go check it out. Um, or to share it with people. Maybe it will yeah, influence someone else. But yeah, um, and um, Not Your Milk was saying, I tried to get Laura Jane Grace yeah, from Against Me. Yeah, she... She's not vegan. Um, she's kind of um, on and off vegan um, just every now and then. But yeah, Inge is the only um, full-time vegan and against me from, from what I know. If you ever need, to, trust me, if you ever need to know who's vegan and who's not in the music world, give me a shout because there is so much misinformation online. Yeah. There are so many people that are listed as vegan and they're not. Oh, like, yeah, 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 yeah they are. Because not, yeah. not, not all of them talk about it, do they, really, like publicly? No, people just picked but up on something. But now, like, you're... 
Sorry? Yeah, people, sometimes people just pick up on like one little kind of, um, you know, quote that someone said. They're like, oh yeah, I had a vegan donut. And they're like, oh, they must be vegan. And then suddenly they end up in a top 10 vegan celebrity list. And yeah, they're not vegan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm saying like the people that you've interviewed though for this documentary, who are, they are vegan. They are vegan. Yeah. Um, they don't often talk about it very publicly that they are vegan. And now you're, it's like you're offering them an opportunity to talk about it because it's a vegan, it's, it's purely a vegan documentary. Yeah. So now's the opportunity to talk exactly. about it. Yeah, I'm talking to anyone that's vegan. And so or, or... those conversations that you wouldn't hear anywhere else in any other music magazine or, or anything like that is going to happen in this video, in this uh, film. Yeah. Which is, exci- which is the exciting bit. Someone just asked if Grimes is vegan. Um, it's she's... kind of like more exclusive that way, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so not if, if Grimes is vegan, she's she's not strictly vegan. No, she um, uh, she actually tweeted out a picture of her eating like ice cream, saying she's taking a day off or something, which obviously means she's she's plant based. She's not like ethical vegan. I mean, you know, she's ninety nine percent of the time she eats a vegan diet, but obviously she hasn't made that full connection, or she wouldn't have a a day off. Yeah. <laughs> So to speak, uh, you know, which is which is disappointing. But it, she's she's the kind of person I would like to interview for this because I think it would be quite interesting to, um, for one, see if I can sway her to become fully vegan, which you know she's obviously very close to it, and um, it yeah, might just yeah. give a bit of a build up in you know kind of you know within the documentary to kind of talk to people who are transitioning uh, up to people who are vegan and you know, so people kind of learn as they go kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, is Matt Davis from Funeral for a Friend vegan? Yeah. Could someone just say that? If he yeah. is, um, I will get hold of him because that'd be really good. Yeah, this is automatic as well. Yeah, he's he's um, vegan. Oh, one person I have. Uh, got. Yeah, I just want to. I, 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 I can give it a couple of exclusives just on the as a live stream. Some other people that are confirmed. Um, Gray the rapper, he's confirmed. The one who did Vegan yeah. Thanksgiving. I don't know. I don't know anything. You must have heard Vegan Thanksgiving. It was around last year that beans, greens, tomatoes, potatoes, whatever it was. That was that last year. Did you know what? You didn't hear it. It's like went completely no. viral. That that rapper went viral and he made yeah. made a video, Vegan Thanksgiving. Have you not seen it? No, I know the vegan rap going on Facebook. The no, that's, that's the a later one. This, this guy's the... an actual rapper from Atlanta. Um, um but yeah check oh, check him out um, someone just wrote something else um, don bauer is not uh, a real vegan no don, just, don bauer isn't a vegan he's a transitioning vegan he actually says that as well um i want to talk about the perks of the indigo indigo campaign chris oh, you can talk about the perks oh yeah yeah emma was kind enough to be the second ever donator yeah. to the uh, the campaign so thank you emma and um yeah the perks she, are incredible she bought, like she uh a Skype chat with Danny Howell. <laughs> I just got well excited about that. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. So, Danny we, so but yeah, basically, yeah. if anyone's like big music fans, what um, you you you'll probably like some of the uh, the perks and stuff that are coming up. Because what I'm doing is every time, I'm, well, from now anyway, because I wasn't ever planning on running a a crowdfund originally. But um, as I meet bands now, I'm going to be getting exclusive things from them. So maybe I don't know, like sign stuff or maybe get them to do a skype call with someone or even play a gig in their house or in your house or whatever um so keep an eye on the campaign because they've got to i'm trying to get some really exclusive stuff like one thing it isn't available yet because i need to get some more details is if you're familiar with the band tonight alive uh jenna from tonight alive she wears these big wings on tour and uh she wore them for the whole of the last tour and she's given me the wings to auction off so that's one really cool perk that's going to be going up and um, we're talking to Grumblebee yeah. as well, if you're familiar with him. And he's actually offering for his band to come and play in your living room, which is pretty awesome. Oh my God, what? Yeah. So, I don't know who that, that is, but that's amazing. Yeah, he's actually really, really good. Um, so like, yeah, that's the kind of things I'm trying to organise. So just keep an eye out, because there's going to be some really fun yeah. stuff kind of coming up. So. Oh, that'd be so amazing. Isn't it? Like, just get some musicians to come out your house and play for you and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Like, some really, really... I'd, yeah, I'd pay for that. Yeah, how much do you want? <laughs> yeah, you know, that, that's what kind of things I want yeah. going on. So, yeah, really good. Um, there is a vegan yeah. Katy Perry Raw video. Is it I'm going to eat raw by any chance? Because that's like, I don't know. 
Um, we, um, should we answer a few more questions and then um, well, yeah, let's have a look through. Someone said Stick Man from Dead Prez. Yeah, I'm getting hold of him. Um, is there anything else about documentary? No, I think we're good. Oh, and Chokers. Yeah, I'm going to get hold of him as well. And Jonah Weinhoff and someone's trying to hook me up with him as well. Cool. Uh, oh, yeah. that's not your milk podcast, is thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, so yeah, that's that's enough about that. Anyway, uh, I'm going to be doing a, a proper. Um, uh, a whole stream about the documentary another time. So if you're not subscribed to my channel, go subscribe to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And you can tune in and learn about that. No, or... it's just a, 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 I just wanted to do a quick little shout out for it yeah. because... And on social media, you know, uh, to... Facebook, search for well, ta ta Taking Note Film, look up that and you can um, stay up to date with all the updates and all the fun, exciting things that are on the Yeah, just, I just wanted to give the shout out because the Indiegogo campaign starts today, so that's why I wanted to mention this stream. Thank you, Emma. But a, a more in-depth stream to follow on your channel, Chris. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do a proper one. Really going into oh, this news we've gone up to, we've gone up to a yeah. hundred pound already. Yay! Someone else has donated. <laughs> Thank you, whoever someone's that was. Someone's donated you a hundred pounds. No, so it's up to a hundred pound now. So oh. someone's someone else has donated. I don't know who that, who that is. Have they bought a perk? Somebody's donated up to what do you mean? Like no, somebody's it, donated it, you hundred pounds. It, it, it's, it's up to a hundred pound now. Like so, I, I the. You know, I've got a hundred pound of the target, what? so five people have donated in total. Five people have donated, and you've got. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was. Th I, I, I thought you were talking about the super chat then. No, no. Someone no. wants to donate a hundred pound in the super chat yeah. for free, but that's probably quite a lot for a super chat. <laughs> um, oh, here's something I actually um, I yeah. really want to discuss about effective activism. Sai Smith is saying, "How effective are saves?" Because we're both people that go to saves. So we could probably discuss this. Oh, I haven't been to one since January. Well, I, went, I went to one um, on Monday and one the Thursday before. I've been to probably three or four in the last couple of months. But like talking about effectiveness of saves, okay? Yeah. So I can honestly say that I have definitely 100% made a number of people vegan from going to saves. Um, in fact, um, when I was at the one in Bodmin and I live streamed, uh, a friend of mine called Rosie tuned into the live stream and she went vegan yeah. during the live stream and came to the save the next, the next time it was on. So, yeah, she, uh, it's good because you, you're very good at sort of like uh, narrating them, what's going on and talking to people in the chat and engaging yeah. with people, getting, to, getting them to think about veganism whilst showing you know, what they're contributing to at the same time. Yeah. I mean, I would say, I would say that, I would say that, I would say the topic shouldn't really be our saves effective. It should be how to make, yeah, how to, how to make it effective. Yeah. Yes. How, how, yeah. how to be yeah. effective at saves. I think that should be more the question. Yeah. 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 That's, that's a good, that's the, yeah. Because saves can be extremely effective. Obviously is. if you just go and you just bear witness, then, um you'll make you know, i mean they are still effective in different ways so let, let's just so let's start from the smallest effect okay so just say you go to a save you don't have a camera you're there purely to bear witness to the animal um you know what effect does that have because it can seem like it has nothing well the major effect no, you want to bring someone that's not vegan to that that's that form of activism you want to don't just go there yourself as a vegan get somebody who's not vegan to come with you yeah but what what's going to <laughs> what's going to say is the effectiveness of even going on your own and bearing witness is you you can now talk to people from experience. You can now say to people, I have yeah, been okay. to a slaughterhouse. I have seen these animals go in, in the trucks. And the one thing I found, I don't know if you found this, Emma, is that I, um, since I have been to saves, and I, as soon as I mentioned I've been to a slaughterhouse, people take me way more seriously. Mm -hmm. They suddenly yes. are like, oh, you've been to a slaughterhouse kind of thing, you know. And that alone is yeah. effective, I find. And just yeah, even having you know pictures on your phone or whatever, and go like, oh, here's a picture. Or it's like when people say, um, it's probably like when people say, when they talk about war. Uh, this is not a very good analogy, but you know, they talk about war and stuff like. That. Is it effective? Is it not? Or uh, until you actually speak to a, a, a soldier, you don't know what you know. Like that's been there, that's been in a war zone. Like it's, if if somebody's like bad mouthing soldiers or whatever, and but they don't know anything about it until you've spoken to a soldier and like they've been to warfare and stuff, you can't really you can't really say 
yeah, whether you, it's good or yeah, bad. You, yeah, or you don't take it as seriously. It yeah, as, as soon as if, as soon as a soldier says, "Oh well, I I was in Afghanistan and people died," you suddenly take that more seriously than just hearing it on the news because it's first person. Yeah, but you always take first person yeah. accounts more seriously. Um, so, so yeah. that is super effective if you're going on your own and just bearing witness. That has a really good effect. I would say the most effective way to go to saves is to gather footage and to tell the animal stories. Live streams yeah. are extremely effective, especially like, one thing I've done recently is um, I try and put the, point the camera at me now rather than being behind the camera. So I can say, here's me, okay. I'm at a slaughterhouse, here's the trucks, Here's the animals right next to me. I'm in the shot. They're in the shot. No one could deny oh, this is happening. Yeah. Like I find that is really, really effective at getting yeah. people's uh, attention. And also just because... Oh, okay, so getting the camera on yourself with the animals, the trucks, everything. Yes. So that people could see that you're actually there and, and how you're reacting to it. Yeah, I, I find that's really effective. And you can talk people through what is going on. Uh, you know, and kind of be like, you know, this is what's happening. This is where I am, you know. This is the animal. Can you justify what's about to happen to this animal? All these kind of things. Um, so yeah, live streaming is really good. Also, if you if you can't live stream, just you know, photos are really good to put online. All these things just to show people because people do look at it. And I have so I, I run a club night, uh, like a rock club night down where I live, and the amount of people that come up to me at my club night and they've all watched the videos. They all like, oh yeah, I watched your video at Slaughterhouse or something. You know, they they, they all notice yeah. them um so it does get it does get a lot of people thinking so um in that respect then yes i think saves are extremely effective activism for showing non-vegans who they're you're vegan. making me want to you're making me want to go to one now because i haven't been for a while and good right. everyone go to save. if you if you've not been to a save please go to a save and just experience it it's a really weird thing because i know a lot of people are really nervous about going to a save because obviously it's very emotional the first, you know the first time I went which was I went with with Emma in Suffolk I got really emotional and I, I actually filmed myself as well because I was like I want to show people how real this is I want to show people that this isn't a joke um but oh. once you've been to one you'll want to go to more and more and more and more and when you start seeing like you know friends and family or whatever noticing these videos and you know, asking about it and mm. stuff, then you soon realise that you're getting in their heads. You know, you're making them think about things and you just continue doing it. I think it's good that if you, with live streams as well, it's, uh, they are particularly effective. Yeah, live streams. Because you can, you're you always engaging the audience. Like, do you think this is ethical? Do you think this is right? Look what's happening to, you know, you can see the victims yeah. here. These are the victims. Uh, I'll tell They're you, about to go off to sleep. I'll tell you what's what's is, is this right? What's the justification for this? You know. I'll tell you what the most effective thing is about a live stream, though, is it's because it's then and there at that very moment. Because yeah. for some reason, we've got this weird thing as humans where if it's happening there and then, it's really, really important. Yeah. If it happened a week ago or, it's, yeah, or a month, yeah. it, 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 gradually really it starts becoming less and less important. Even a year. If, like, for example, if you said, oh, there was an abuse case, at a slaughterhouse a year ago, people are like, oh, but it was a year ago. You know what I mean? They don't take it as seriously, yeah, but yeah. then and there, suddenly it's like amazing. Oh, oh, Harry Brown saying something. I don't see the point in saves. Every time I've seen someone explain them, they've just used emotional arguments. I mean, in what sense? I mean, I mean, I don't. No, I don't no, no, use, no. I, I, I don't use emotional arguments. No, no, no. That's. Uh, the, I know where the confusion is here because yes, there is. Um, it is over, an overly emotional. Um, things you're seeing the victims and stuff but um if you're going to say uh it's it's to it's um an appeal to emotion and then you're going to have to say that uh oh hang on i need to get this point right because it's it's vitally important right um if you're going to say that going to a save or highlight showing the victims from a save is an appeal to emotion then you're going to have to say to be consistent that um, it's not right to appeal to emotions if that was a truck of humans. Yeah, that, that's and a, they, uh, one, same trait. one again, argument I always that's use. Same trait. So it's, it's, it's only, like if you're only appealing to emotions and there wasn't any logic or reasoning behind that emotion, that, the emotion of rhetoric that you're using, then it would be fallacious, right? And it would just be like, nobody's going to take that seriously. But because this is to do with ethics, like 
you can't the two go hand in hand like the the um, the emotional um the appeal to emotion does stem it kind of um stems from the the ethical argument yeah well one thing i was going so, to say which i find the the a really strong part of of saves is um which is the argument I kind of use, is I always say to people, look at this animal in this truck, uh, now try and justify if this animal was treated in a certain way prior to this very moment, would it justify where it's going to go? I always use that because then it kind of eliminates all the free range and pasture fed yeah. and all this kind of stuff. And it gets yeah, people yeah, thinking yeah. As, as, it, as a living being, as an individual. As and a literally, at that, that present moment, yeah, it, it, if this was a human in a truck and they'd had a really good life before this, uh, if, if this person was being chauffeur driven in a Lamborghini or whatever to their death, would it make, would it make it right? No, of course not. So it's not like how they've been raised or their free range or all those fucking buzzwords. That's not relevant. Yeah. The, the relevance is, is it ethical to take someone, uh, another sentient being's life that uh, hasn't consented to be killed? No. Yeah. Oh, um, you've you've got a super chat which we should probably um oh, acknowledge shit. from. Yeah, it's from uh, Vohan V. I, I think it's, I think it was, has anyone been arrested at Save? Oh, it's Vohan again. Yeah. Has anyone ever get arrested at Save? Uh, a few people have. Um, there, was, there was a really famous yeah. case of uh, Anita from um, Toronto Pig Save who was charged with uh, giving water to pigs, but she actually won the case because they said that yeah, compassion is not a crime. And um, occasionally, I mean, they arrested... Um, not publicity the because of that one case. Well, they arrested someone recently, didn't they? And that was for, um, for obstruction of highway. But then they just had to release him again because they couldn't charge him. So yeah, a few, a few people have been like arrested, but they've always, no one's been charged as yet, from what I know. But it's very rare, very, very rare. I, 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 that's the only two that I can think of personally that have, have resulted in arrests and nothing's ever happened. Yeah, I think as long as you uh, obviously don't break the law. Uh, oh, see you later, Owen. Owen's leaving. Trespass. So. If, you start, if you start trespassing and they ask you to leave, then it's not illegal to tr necessarily trespass, but it is if they ask you to leave and you don't. So you've got to be very careful with that kind of thing. Um, I, I think yeah, you should be, you should use uh, saves in an effective way um, to get the most out of them without causing trouble. Yeah. Try and like so try and balance it so that you know you're you want you can push the boundaries a little bit like asking the police questions or trying to talk with the slaughterhouse owners and stuff like that and try and engage a conversation with them. But you've yeah. got to um, play by the law as well. I definitely say to everyone because there's a few people in there obviously. You're not sure about save. Just go to one. Go to one and then judge it yourself. I mean, it's it's a really it's a really hard saves are really hard to explain. Like, I've tried to explain it to people before, and I'm just like, you just have to go, and then you'll kind of get it a bit more. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's worthwhile. Trust me, it, it is worthwhile. And it, even if it's just the fact that it, it will fully strengthen why you do what you do, because you you see the animals, and it is quite nice sometimes to be able to have given that animal a little bit of affection before it goes in like you know even if it's just like a little rub on the nose or just you know yeah. I think that sometimes even that is just quite a nice thing to, to have known you've done it i mean i know that's all emotion but maybe um what people can be concerned with though is that it can purely be just the emotional um like the, the emotions that come out with it and stuff can make you lash out people a bit more because after afterwards after going to a save you do feel a bit raw yeah, um true. and it's like you go to the supermarket and you see people picking up dead chickens and stuff and it's just like fuck you do you know what i mean you feel, you really have that sort of contempt for people after you've been to a save which isn't helpful but after yeah. you know after a week or so that sort of died down again yeah i don't know what you that's, mean. that's why i haven't been to one in so long because i don't want to be i don't want to be like that I don't want to be like this overly emotional person because I found for me in my own activism and this, it's not the same for everyone because there's people like um, Paul Bashir and um, James Aspie and Joey Carvstrong, they do 
they use like the emotional rhetoric to their advantage and they really get people to empathize and stuff and they're able to do that but I just for whatever reason I can't I, I don't feel like I can do that because for whatever reason it's just my personality is different I'm not like you're really good at it Chris because you're um you just got like this natural you just you've got this natural empathy about you this sort of air of compassion and kindness and stuff whereas I just I don't think I really necessarily have I, I, I do have it but I have to it's like a, a sort of like a it's gonna make me sound really bad but um I have compassion but I don't really I don't really show it it's just like well it's just common sense yeah like compassion I don't need to tell anyone like this is how obviously um like look at this fucking look at this fucking cow dying you know, this cow being stabbed to death kind of thing mm. um isn't it an emotional thing like you shouldn't you should, you should be getting upset about this I, I don't know i don't feel comfortable doing that i just sort of well, like I, to I, I ask don't, people don't, questions to you. you don't have to you don't have to you know say it in that kind of way i think it's just you know i think ev everyone everyone within them has the capacity to understand that what is going on is wrong that's what i feel and, yeah. it, and i think that's why the saves are good because you can just show people it and they make their own mind up and all you've got all you've got to do is just mm -hmm. you know just explain just kind of walk them you know walk them through what's going on you don't necessarily have to be like being super compassionate yeah. or anything you just, ex it's just, very you just matter of fact. just be really matter of fact you don't have to use overly emotional language like look at these poor babies I, I i it makes me cringe when i see these kind of videos like oh poor babies i i know that's really bad and i know they they are victims and they totally deserve um sympathy and stuff like that but for me personally i react better to very sort of matter of fact look this is uh, the process this is what's going to happen now these pigs have been driven to their slaughter you don't have to use like emotional rhetoric to yeah. uh, to tell the story well I, um, I guess i guess this comes down to the whole kind of um you know different approaches work for different people yeah, so you know yeah. some where where some people will react more to you know emotion then other people will react more to facts so there's a place for both of it yeah. there's a there's a place for what i do uh, a save and there's a place of what yeah. uh, what you would do different people react to different people yeah you know exactly you can't be doing too should bad we, you um, more subs um, than me <laughs> we wrap it up because i'm getting tired yeah <laughs> listen almost to ask any a last question a last question what be a good one though what one more quick question if anyone um, can name one. Come on. Maybe. They're just sort of ignoring us now because they're talking amongst um, each other, so... Um, I'm not your milk sent yeah, me Yeah, thanks very uh, so much to Vohan V. I'm not your milk sent me a message. All right, I will check that shortly, mate. Oh, yeah, a simple question. Vegan camp out, yes or no? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I haven't got my ticket yet. Going. I'm going to be, uh, I'm gonna be in the really activism wondering. tent doing a... Um, a panel with Joey Carbstrong and Ed Winters, we get, and probably James Aspie as well, talking about street activism and stuff. So you, yeah. you've got to come to the vegan camp out. Like, why would you miss that? Yeah, I, I'm, I, I, I definitely want to come. I've just got to work out getting there and stuff. Cheap so as well. Yeah, I, I, it's twenty five pounds. I am, I am, I am, I am planning to go. I just as long as I can get there because it's just living in yeah. the middle of nowhere in Devon is a bit of a trap. Oh, apparently, Vegan Games just uploaded. I don't know what that is, but it's something to watch after this anyway. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, let's cut off, let's cut this off and let's go and watch vegan games. Oh, and yeah, another quick one because yeah. there's one on mine which I've kind of ignored for ages. It's a really yeah. quick one anyway. Yeah. It says, um, "I'm I'm here from the that guy T O G Mizen debate. Who do you think would make a good debate de par partner to convince others? Who would our debate partners be if it wasn't so if, if, if it wasn't from... us? Who would we have oh, on our team? Chris, can I get this? Can I just get that straight? So this person has come from. That guy T's live stream of OG Mizen. Yeah, so he's, he's obviously followed me from there. So he's asking. Is or is not vegan, sorry. Um, I don't know whether he's vegan or not, actually. Oh, okay. I don't know. And what's the question? Oh, he just asked um, who would um, who would be a, a good debate partner. Mm. So just say, just say we, we, we weren't teaming up. Who, who would we have? Who would you have on your team if, you, if it wasn't me? And it wasn't Isaac. Yeah, let's, 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 let's not do the obvious ones. Someone, someone who, who hasn't ever done a debate before. 
Who would you pick? Um, probably Owen. I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 why, why do I need anyone else? I would probably go with either Joey. Joey Carbs. Oh, yeah. I think he'll be good. Or um, Mike the Vegan, because he's very good. I think, oh yeah, he's really good, yeah, isn't he? I think he'd have some good arguments. He's, oh apparently he's videos. um so... he he's transitioning, so he's not vegan yet, but he's transitioning. Okay, fair enough. Well uh don't transition for long. It doesn't take too long. There's loads, you know, you've got the vegan cheese, you've got the uh plant based meals. Oh earthling Ed, he'd be good. Obviously. Yeah, Ed. Huge collection of, uh, sorry? Ed would be a good one. Good Ed is very good. A good yeah. debate partner. But I, um and to finish me off... and Ed are kind of similar in the way that we do the, the street interviews and stuff yeah. and the way that we debate. So, And to finish off, who, who would, who would you like to debate? Who is, your, who is the one person you would like to debate about it? The one person? Um... Oh, I don't know. Um... Just like anyone off from YouTube or in real life? Yeah, it's got to be like a person. Like, I, I would, I would like to debate. Oh, I, I know. Sorry, go on. Oh yeah, I, I'd like to debate was... Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> yeah. Because I think if you can, if you can get through to Gordon Ramsay, that would have such a massive effect. If Gordon Ramsay went vegan, shit would change. Yeah, that would never happen though, because he's a chef. Yeah, but yeah, but what about think about so, it? If you if if. Because he's, uh, he's a chef, it doesn't mean that, you know, we, we, we've got to think, you know, properly, no, yeah, no, yeah. positively. But I'm just if, saying, if I'm in terms of, of, realistically, it's not going to happen. Well, well that, we but were, I think that we couldn't debate him. Or the, that, or that the ones that are the people that I have in mind are people that realistically would go vegan if, given the, if I was given the chance to debate them. Who, who would that be? There would be people, people like um, Jordan Peterson or Sargon of Akkad or someone like that. Oh yeah, yeah. Sargon would be quite a good one, wouldn't it? Because they, because they, you, you know, they're going to be intellectually honest people, because they have to be because of what they're doing. Yeah, true. Um, yeah. So if given the chance, if given the opportunity, like I went did with um, that guy T, because he knew that that guy T was going to be honest, and he was like, um, so that was a good debate. So I'd want to, I'd want to debate someone like that that you know is going to be honest, is not going to just go on stupid tangents like that are irrelevant just yeah. to get out of it just to get out of the um the ethics of veganism someone said just someone called Thund it. thunderfoot have you watched thunderfoot no i don't know what is that well, you, well, you, said, you said thunderfoot and sargon also no sargon thunderfoot. oh oh is it another youtuber or but something? I, I, I guess to, to wrap up the uh the stream though um the next debate may possibly be um me versus the think pot if you watched my response video, oh no it's actually happening um i've got i've got to i've got to email him and see whether oh. he, he, he was up for it um i've got it i've got a little secret weapon if, if he's listening i've got a little secret weapon that's all all ready to go um but yeah so that would be a <laughs> that'd be a fun one I'm not gonna go too oh hard, bless though. him I'm not gonna go too hard on him. He's he's a one, isn't he? He yeah. is. Would would I team up with Sorsha? Probably, because <laughs> I, I think Sorsha's quite funny. Um, oh god, <laughs> I'd like to see Sorsha in a debate. Actually, it'd be quite interesting. Yeah, she just she just be like all sassy and stuff and like condescending. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. Well, what should be like in real life? I don't know. I'd like to see whether. The thing is, people don't realize that Sorsha is an actress. That's what she's actually an actress. Yeah, she does yeah, yeah. things like so. She plays a bit of a character on her videos, like yeah. a lot of the time. You know, she just play up to it. So I don't know. I think she'd be, she'd be quite good. You got yeah, the thing is, you got to realize a lot of people online have very different strategies when talking to people in real life. You know. Well, I think um, people, this is where I think we are better, people like you and I are better in debates than someone, say, like um, Saoirse, because we, we, we're we not acting, we are, this, is, this is us, yeah. you know, this is how we are, True. Um, we're not acting, like, 
if we slip if we slip up we're gonna admit that we've slipped up we're gonna admit that we made a yeah. mistake someone just made me laugh because mm-hmm. they've written um that infected penis from your videos scarred his mind yeah <laughs> that was a disgusting yeah. scene embarrassing bodies yeah I, thought, what, I, I can't remember what i would use that for now i'm getting really tired what about what about um, so point of, um what about Ryan um, from a happy healthy vegan as a debate uh, partner? I'm Ryan from yeah. Happy Healthy Hi. Vegan. <laughs> oh yeah, Ryan. I reckon he would no, end the debate just, with keep it car, baby, keep it car. Yeah, it'd be just so slow. The, the yeah, conversation would yeah. Move on. What about the just, hell? Just like, just like so slowly, and yeah. eventually, you know, we might get to the point, but <laughs> it might take quite a long time. Yeah, we need to talk yeah. about the ethics. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's our rubbish impressions. If you want to do impressions of other YouTubers, we can try. Um, no, do you, do you guys keep it carved? Do you keep it carved? I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta wrap this up. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, well, we've been on this for quite a long time. But we'll, we'll do another one soon anyway. It's fun. Yeah, this has been really and I hope I hope people have learned something at least, you know. It's been a good, good little discussion. It's been fun. I've, I've pissed a few people off by uh, talking about my mum, apparently. Yeah, I think uh, we've, we've all annoyed someone. I'm sure. All good. Yeah. yeah. It's all good. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Thanks for the, uh, the super chats. Appreciate it. Um, yes, thank you so much. PB. Make sure I'm, I'll post the link again if anyone wants to check out the um, the, the documentary. Um, if you want to share it with people or you want to donate or whatever, all good in the hood. Always appreciate it. Um, even if you just want to watch it, all good. I've had to like, it's annoying because it won't let me put URLs in the... Um, in the chat, so I have to kind of put spaces between things. So, I put I put the links to the crowd uh, to the Indiegogo and in the yeah. link to, uh, in the description. Oh, ben didn't of learn anything. Stream. Bender said he came in, he didn't learn anything. Huh? Hey Ben, I'll, I'll teach you something quickly. Tusks are actually congealed hair. There you go. That's what you learned. Tim. <laughs> Most cornflakes come That's from America. One. There you go. Now you've learned two things. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. All from Alan Partridge. Cy Smith said he learnt loads, so right. good. Thank you, Cy. And uh, Jer- Jericho Holic Goatface says, Chris is my bae. Word up. You're my bae too. Let's be yeah. bays together. <laughs> a lot of love in the chat tonight. <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of love. That's what we're about. We're, it's all about the love. All about love. Right. But we're going to wrap it up because mm. Emma needs to go to bed. And I don't know what. Mm. Probably just going to look on Facebook. I need to finish off my video. Yeah, actually, I'm going to watch whatever the new Vegan Games video is. Who knows? I, I've got a duty now to the patrons of my channel. Oh, yeah. Gotta keep up the good content. So. Oh, it's, it's the No Bullshit Debate yeah. Challenge. Mate, has No Bullshit agreed to, to debate him? You'll find out if. Oh, you... yeah. Uh, it's happening. Is vegan it... says. Uh, vegan, uh, I'll check. It was on um, Richard's Twitter. Oh, it's so, so it's actually happening now? He's they're in discussions it. about it happening on Sunday. They yeah. might be happening on Sunday. That's going to be a bad. But I think if you just check his Twitter, uh, he'll probably come up with it. I'm sure he'll come up with a video saying when it's going to be anyway. Well, unless this is it, because he said no bullshit debate challenge. Like, you know, it's only four minutes long. Oh. Unless he's oh, is that, oh, is it? Is it? Yeah, yeah. It just oh, li- right. literally went up ten I minutes ago. I that then, because I want to comment. Yeah. Cool. All right, guys. Well, let's let's get off this then, and we can all go and watch it together, <laughs> and we can chat about it next time. Still gonna watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's all have a discussion in the comments of that video now, shall we? Yeah. We'll see you in the comments, everyone. We'll see you there. Yeah. Cool. All right, then, everyone. Right. I'm gonna keep post... it real until next time, guys. Yeah. Keep it carved, baby. Keep it carved. Keep it carved. Keep, <laughs> keep it carved. Carved. <laughs> keep it right. carved. <laughs> oh. That's cute. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye. All right. Love you. Bye. Right, love you. Bye. bye love you. Bye. Pressing stop.